the fourth edition of the Michigan Wolverines football team and for the 48th consecutive time at home, better than 100,000 fans at Michigan Stadium. Hello, everybody. I'm Ray Lane, along with Jim Branstetter and Jimmy. The Michigan Wolverines are out to do it again in 1983. There are some people that say they're good enough to be ranked number one in the country, and we're going to find out today. Bo Schembechler starts his 15th season, and of course, at home, he has never lost an opening game. Never lost an opening day game. Uh, he has lost on the road. Once to Wisconsin a couple years back. He told me last week, he said he expects that not to happen at home. Of course, the Wolverines this afternoon take on a Pac-10 team. First time they've ever met against the Cougars of Washington State. An interesting ball club. A very interesting ball club, and maybe the most interesting thing about Washington State is their defense. Ray, they've probably got up front seven people. Their down linemen and their linebackers may be the best Michigan face all year or one of the top three defensive fronts they meet. They're led by Keith Millard. He's an all-Pac-10 performer at tackle. He's also an All-American possibly this year. Uh, they expect a lot from the defense at Washington State and that's what may keep them in the Pac-10 race. Millard, of course, number 93. You'll see him on that right side of that defensive line. But all Michigan starts this ball game at least the season without their number one quarterback. That's the biggest key for the Michigan Wolverines today. Steve Smith, who injured his shoulder in the Rose Bowl last January 1st, Don Rogers popped it out in a shoulder separation. He re-injured in an early fall drills. He has not been able to come back well enough to play. So David Hall will get the start at quarterback for Michigan today. And that does a lot of interesting things because Michigan probably won't run the option as much. And they'll be back to a power football team, power eye, where the quarterback just hands off. But he's not that big a part of an offense. We'll see more drop back passing. Of course, if you like football and the warm weather, we've got it in Ann Arbor today. Better than 85 degrees. A slight wind. We'll talk about that a little bit later on and we'll stand by for opening kickoff coming up in just a moment. The Michigan Wolverines will be kicking off to get this ball game and get the season underway. The Wolverines to your right, that is the south end of Michigan Stadium, and Washington State Cougars to your left will be defending the North Goal. The Cougars with already one win this season. They opened up last week against Montana State, and in that one, one of a score of 27 to 7. And as Jim told you, we can expect to see quite a bit of option doing from this visiting team from Pullman, Washington. Yeah, Ray, they run what they call a dive option. They will have a split backfield, much similar to the pro set, and Ricky Turner, their quarterback, is lightning quick, and he really is the key to the offense. Michigan wants to stop them. They have to stop, contain Ricky Turner. For the kickoff, senior Todd Slopey, young man out of Orchard Park, New York, and a deep man for Washington State. Back inside, his goal line is Richard Calvin. He lets Stockton bring it out. And so Slopey, on his first kick in competition, drives it back for the automatic touchback. Slopey, a barefooted kicker, kind of interesting because Bo Schembechler has, when he came to Michigan, said, I will not have a kicker play for me unless he's an actual player. Well, lately the kicking has become a specialty kind of item, and Todd Slopey, a barefooter, doing it for Michigan. All right, the Washington State line up front, and this is an experience as you look for it from left tackle to right tackle. In that backfield, Ricky Turner, a man who is really quick-footed, can throw, and the running backs. So the option of going straight ahead the first play and maybe just picking up one yard. The Washington State Cougars, and on that first carry, their young man, Reuben Mays, and probably their best running back they have in the squad. Turner, the quarterback, Mays and Porter, Porter the fullback, but Mays is a man to watch for Washington State. Pretty good receivers. John Marshall leading that back in that department, a junior college transfer. D.D. Moore now in there right now as a wide flanker on the left side. Second and nine for Washington State. And a low throw and trapped that time by D.D. Moore at about the 27-yard line. That's incomplete. It'll be second and nine for the Cougars. We saw a motion from one of the offensive backs, Ray, and uh, Washington State didn't do much of that in their opener against Montana. One of the reasons I think they're doing it is to get Michigan linebackers spread out a little bit so that they can run that dive option. That defensive line, now the linebacking core for Michigan. Bourne, of course, leading that back. And in the backfield, some very active defenders for Michigan. Third and nine, and Turner has no place to go. At that time, 
Coming in from the right side was Kevin Brooks to make the stop. Nice to have Brooks back in uniform after injuries plagued him last year. Kevin Brooks had an injury last year uh, after the third game. He broke his leg, a bone in his leg. But at that time, he was one of the best defensive tackles Bo had, probably the best pass rusher. It looks like here, beginning the year, Kevin Brooks is starting off where he left off because he just ran right through his offensive tackle. Glenn Harper punting Giovanni making the run, and it's Giovanni Smith across the 50. So Michigan in first position with great possession as far as location on the field at the 46-yard line. So before the Wolverines go into their first play for the line of scrimmage, let's take this timeout. First and ten for Michigan from the 47. And on the sweep, and we'll see a lot of that. Kerry Smith with the first carry out of Grand Rapids, picking up lots of yardage, just shy of a first down. What Michigan is trying to do to Washington State is crack them outside because they are extremely strong inside as we talked about before the game with Millard and those people key here is look at the fullback Armstrong gets through the outside shoulder and gets downfield and throws a block that allows Kerry Smith to get the extra yardage he needed double tied in this time with Nelson and Carthens in there at short yardage and going straight ahead the tailback Kerry and that was Kerry Smith again close to the first down straight ahead it's a good blocking and Michigan has the first down and the forward wall offensive wide for Michigan backfield made the start with Armstrong and Smith Armstrong started a couple of games last season Nelson Bean and Giovanni Johnson as a receiver first and ten for the Wolverines at the 36-yard line of Washington State. And Hall with his first pass of the afternoon complete at the 30-yard line. Tied in, Sims Nelson making that one. Real simple pattern, Ray. Sim Nelson faked the block down inside, hesitated a second to hold the linebackers to make him think run. Then he just slipped out into the flat. Washington State's defense, Hodge, that nose guard, active linebackers, the strength of their ball club, on a secondary that's rated pretty good in the Pac-10. Second down and five for the Wolverines, just outside the 30-yard line. David Hall, the quarterback. That's Nelson now to the right side, the tight end. And the eye formation. And the handoff again to Smith going ahead. Off tackle on the right side. He'll be shy by about a yard of first down. Ray, one other thing I'd like to mention. Go back to that last pass completion by Michigan first down pass we haven't seen Bo do a lot of first down passing but I think because David Hall is the quarterback today and Steve Smith isn't you'll probably see more of that first down possession passing game in the five to eight yard range to a tight end to a back out of the backfield you'll see a lot of that on first down and it will give Michigan great opportunity on first down to maybe break one again short yardage with the double tight end that was a tight end on motion catalyst and a first down for Michigan going to the right side football to get that first down and on the carry again the workhorse to this point Kerry Smith already had the good credentials coming into the season Kerry Smith now coming out of the game Ray and Rick Rogers going in we expect to see a lot of that uh, happening because of the heat here today we expect Bo to really uh, shuttle in his running backs we'll see three or four of them possibly today Rogers a tailback Garrett, the fullback, in behind Hall, first and ten. Flag goes down, and again using the tight end, Sim Nelson, complete, but a flag down, and location that flag back at the 25-yard line could be in the Michigan backfield. Looks like a motion or illegal procedure on Michigan. We'll have to wait for the official's call, Ray, but I think the Wolverine's a little too anxious. Hall does a real good job. It's a slight play action fake to Rodgers. Nelson, again, right out there wide open. And again, it was a first down pass. One of the things Bo is doing to keep Washington State off guard. He doesn't usually throw on first down, but with David Hall in there, 
That's the kind of thing they're doing, and it has been successful so far. Ray, the penalty on Washington State, not Michigan. Had lines but making that call and moving the ball inside the 10-yard line. So Michigan collects its third first down of this ball game with 10.57 to go in the opening quarter. The running backs stay the same with Garrett, the fullback, the tailback, Rick Rogers. And going straight ahead, Garrett close to the five-yard line. And you're talking, Jimmy, earlier on the passes and both of those first down passes going to the tight end. Absolutely, and I think, again, there are two reasons for that. One that Hall's in the game, and on first down, Washington State must be loading up up front with their linebackers in real tight and running those tackles and pinching down to stop the running play. So Bo saw that, obviously, on a couple first down plays early and decided to go to the first down safe pass to the tight end or back out of the backfield. The ball at the six-yard line. Second and goal. Same running backs again, Garrett Rogers. And Hall going to the end. Nobody around. And touchdown to Michigan. Coming out of the backfield to make the catch. Eddie Garrett, the fullback. Great call for the defense Washington State was in. The Cougars were in a defense where they were firing both inside linebackers. And it was a play action fake towards the outside. Normally in a play like that, Eddie Garrett, the fullback, will be kicking out on the end. The end saw him coming after him. He had single coverage, and Eddie Garrett just faked the block and ran right by him into the end zone, wide open, nobody to cover him. All right, young Mr. Schofield, to try for the extra point. Wolverines marching 47 yards in eight plays. And time of possession, three minutes and 30 seconds. Capped off on that pass to Garrett from Hall. Schlopey to try for his first extra point. And he has it. Michigan with 10 13 to go in the opening quarter, taking a 7 0 lead. Again, Ray, the pass play is David Hall's favorite. He threw two of these in the Rose Bowl. You can see Garrett start out. There's nobody to cover him. Everybody's caught up inside looking for the run. Garrett comes wide open in the flat. Michigan leading Washington State 7 to nothing here in the first quarter. 10-13 to play. Due to the nature of... Schlopey to try for his second kickoff of the afternoon. By the way, on that last Michigan drive, going to the air three times, and Hall was perfect three for three, good for 27 yards. Young man standing down at the goal line, a freshman for Washington State, Richard Calvin out of Santa Ana, California. He's a 175 pounder. And Schlopey going to the air again with Calvin backing up, and he had no play that was sitting out of the end zone. And not too much help from the win. We got a southwesterly win a little bit at Michigan's back, but straight power on that kick. Great kick, but let's go back to that touchdown one more time. And what David Hall has done here in the first series for Michigan, Ray, I think it's important. All week long, people weren't sure whether Steve Smith was going to play. And I think Washington State defensively had to prepare for the option. And now Hall is in there. I don't think they're as prepared for the kind of offense David Hall can run as they were for uh, Steve Smith. That's a good point, Jim. Second time on offense for Washington State. The first time they went nowhere. And trying to bust into that middle was the fullback that time. Kerry Porter and no go is up front with Michigan Sensick and Brooks. De Felice all gang tackling. But the other thing Michigan's doing, I think, to stop the dive part of that option is both inside backers for the Wolverines, Mallory and Boren, are filling up there real tight. I'll tell you, you talk about a couple of inside linebackers, exactly what you want. And Boren and in Mallory. Second and ten. Turner can scamper around. He did it a week ago. Scramble and pass. He can run too. Quick footed. And a one on one tackle on a splendid hit that time as Tom Hassel, the outside linebacker, quickly gains his composure and comes back up. And nails Turner at the 26 yard line. This is why Ricky Turner is so dangerous. He has got tremendously quick feet. You have got to keep him inside. They did, but watch him. He breaks inside, then comes outside, and he, when he gets on the loose, he's dangerous. That is an outstanding open field tackle on a very quick back by Tommy Hassel. Washington State now in six plays, a minus 12 yards. Turner that time gained six, so it is third and four for the Cougars. A quick look, now going deep, and that one intended for the tight end, Vince Layton, overthrown by a couple of yards, but he had a step on the defender. 
Washington State, I think, did another thing that they didn't do in their opening game against Montana. They always run split backs in the backfield on that dive option series. And on this situation, they didn't have any backs. It was a strict passing situation, and they ran too many receivers out for Michigan to cover. Harper will go back to punt for Washington State on a fourth and four. Giovanna Johnson back at his 35-yard line. Good punt this time. Will back up to his 27 to make the reception. Tries to get outside and does on one defender. And finally goes out of bounds on the far side of the field, right at the 36-yard line, and the fly goes down in front of the Washington State bench. The punter, Glenn Harper, by the way, in one ball game last week with seven punts, slightly better than a 40-yard average, better than a year ago when he was punting right around 39 yards. So we'll wait for the call on this one. Unnecessary roughness going against Washington State. Johnson gets outside, and I think the call is for a late hit on the sidelines. Right there, 49 comes over and sticks a nose into Johnson after he was out of bounds. And that's another big break for Michigan because they have started both of their drives, the first one inside Washington State's uh, 50, and this one will be right on the 50-yard line. So the Wolverines are enjoying great field position here, and if they can continue to run power football and sustain drives, on a hot day like today, they're going to wear that Washington State defense down. Beans split wide to the left. Giovanni Johnson wide to the right for Michigan. Garrett is the pullback. Rick Rogers is the tailback in that eye. Behind David Hall, who got the start today. Rogers outside. Gets about five yards, and now a flag goes down on the far side of the field again. It was off the ball, Ray. The flag was off the ball and away from uh, where the action was. So I would imagine it's going to be uh, maybe a frustration either on Michigan or on Washington State. I think maybe Doug James took an extra shot at somebody on that Washington State line. Yes, it is. It's a holding call against the Wolverines and the good field position they enjoyed from the penalty that Washington gave them. Now they lose on the holding penalty, and I believe it was Doug James. It'll come back to the 41-yard line of Michigan. And so the Wolverines have collected their first penalty afternoon on that holding call. So instead of a five-yard gain, they'll go back with first down at 20. 834 to go in the opening quarter. This could be a good opportunity again for that first down pass. Uh, Bo might be going to that situation right here. He's putting a fullback right now in a wingback position, new formation. And that is Garrett, the fullback, on that right side of the wing. They start him in motion. Rogers is the tailback, and Hall, a little swing pass out to Rogers. It's the 40, the 50 yard line. He may have stepped out of bounds at his own 40 yard line. And the official on the far side of the field making the call saying he did go out. Uh, one of the rare screens you've seen Michigan run. Uh, they don't run too many pure screen passes, but this is a pure screen pass. Got good yardage, but right there, with his left foot, when he makes the cut back inside, Rick Rogers steps out of bounds. Now Michigan forced into a serious passing situation. They may have to throw the ball down the field, Ray, and get some yardage. They can't go with one of those uh, five to seven yard poppers because they got to get 20 yards now and two downs are kicked. All right, right back at the 40 yard line of Michigan, second down and 20. As I shift back into that eye formation, again with Garrett Rogers, a running back. That's Garrett, the fullback, first man through, gets up close to the 45 yard line. And to make the stop on him, there's Eric Williams, the left tackle. The first time we've seen Michigan attack the inside four people for Washington State today, Ray, with fullback. Everything else has been outside or there have been little dump passes. So inside, you see Michigan is attacking them, but again, it's tough going in there because Washington State has real good personnel. As we said when we came on the air and you talk about experience, that is the experience of Washington State, their defense. And that forward wall had their linebacking core. So Michigan down third and 15. And it's on 45 yard line. Hall wants the pass. Instead, they'll go up the middle and gets across the 50 yard line just into Cougar territory, close to the 49 yard line. And bringing him down is Pat Lynch, the nose guard of Washington State. Washington's also running a defense that we didn't see in the first game against Montana. Against Montana, they were running an odd front or where they had a man on the center all the time, a nose guard. 
the, today they're running almost exclusively an even man front. Looks more like a pro four defense with three linebackers. So Don, Michigan's going to have to adjust to that. Don Blacken for his first punt of the season. Give an idea of what he did for a career. And that long went 73 yards. Kendrick Taylor, the lone safety, to handle the punt return, standing at his 10 yard line for Washington State. Fourth and nine on the punt. And Blacken just sails this baby right into the end zone. There'll be no run back. And Michigan getting some very strong kicking this afternoon. Well, I tell you, Bracken hit that one like we used to see Reggie Roby hit him for Iowa, right? Looked like it was out of a howitzer. We'll be back with more Michigan action right after this. Cougars of Washington State going on the attack with 6.28 to go in the opening quarter. Michigan out of front by a score of 7 0. Ricky Turner staying in there, quarterback, and a pitch out this time coming to LaBomb. And LaBomb trying to cut back in, gets across the 20, close to the 22 yard line. Stacked up in there and leading the way was Mike Corr, the interior linebacker of the Wolverines. Good defensive play by Rodney Lyles, the outside backer. The motion man came over and was looking to deck Rodney Lyles, and that play was originally designed to go outside. Lyles played off the block, forced it back inside, and that's where Bourne came from the tackle. Give LeBomb credit for three yards on the carry. It'll be second down at seven for the Cougars. Michigan leading seven to nothing. We're in the first quarter with 5.52 to go. LeBomb in motion, a little swing pass out to him incomplete as Turner leads him too much by a couple of yards. So Turner and his passing has been off on a couple of occasions, just barely off. Well, Turner is not Washington State's passing quarterback, right? They've got a young sophomore who is a pro-style quarterback. He's 6'4", and he's 205, a youngster by the name of Mark Rippon. And he is really their passing quarterback. Turner, the man running the Cougar offense right now, is their running quarterback, their option quarterback. Cougars with third and seven. At the 23, their own 23. Hand off the maze straight ahead. He'll be shy of the first down inside the 30 yard line. Knee went down right around the 28 yard line. Mike Mallory coming in there to be the first Wolverine to put the hit on him. Shy by about a yard for the Cougars. So for the third time this afternoon, Washington State goes back to punt. And going back on that punt return for Michigan. Giovanni Johnson. Good spiral inside the 30, back to the 27 yard line of the Wolverines. Johnson finding no running room. He tried to slip outside, going to his right, and couldn't do it. A flag has gone down right around the Michigan 42 yard line. So we'll wait for the call on that. But the Cougars that time getting downfield and doing a good job of the punt. against the Wolverines. One of the blockers coming downfield pushed one of the uh, defenders, and uh, that is a penalty. There are some new rules, Ray, involving the punting game this year, too. And some of them are real interesting. For instance, the receiver on a punt must be given two yards, even if he calls for a fair catch, even if he doesn't. If a man doesn't even hit him, but is within that two-yard area around the punt receiver, that is a penalty. So it's really careful now for the kicking team to stay away from that receiver, at least two yards. But if they, if they don't, if they stand up there nose to nose, as we've seen sometimes in the past, it's a penalty. And we can talk about the Academy Award attempts, too. We'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> First and ten. That's coming. <laughs> First and ten for the Wolverines at their own 22-yard line. And trying to get outside and does as Rogers. Rogers turns the corner, gets to the 34 before being driven out of bounds. Moving up quickly was Rico Tipton of Washington State to drive him out of bounds. But that's what we expect to see, a lot of outside movement by Michigan. Michigan is attacking Washington State on its perimeter. You see they're bringing the fullback in motion to form the strength on that side. And this play, Rogers just uses his great speed to turn the corner. Washington State does not have a lot of people on the outside. They're defensing Michigan pretty much for the option, which is tackle to tackle type play. But outside they're vulnerable and Michigan is attacking that. Michigan collecting its fourth first down. Washington State yet with the first down, 12 yards of that last carry by Rodgers. 
Over on that wing back was Rogers. He carries again now, trying to get outside. Does gets across the 40 yard line to the 41. And Ben Carrillo, the strong side linebacker, coming up to do a one on one on him. And that's a new twist. Uh, we haven't seen Michigan's offense go to a wing back formation since I would say Bo's first few years in the early 70s. Glenn Doughty was a, a great defensive or a great wing back. Inside, you can see Keith Millard, their great tackle, getting double teamed by the Michigan down lineman. Key for Michigan is to block Millard, then you can attack him outside. Rodgers on two consecutive carries now with 19 yards. It's second down and a long two. Garrett bursting through the middle, up to his own 48-yard line. Like Garrett showing quick speed and getting the line of scrimmage in a hurry. And the Michigan fullback has carried the ball more in this game than they did the first three games last year, right? They only carried the ball, I think, uh, three or four times all season long. The fullbacks did not get the ball much as a running back. Today we've seen them carry it twice. Michigan's probably feeling a little bit more confident about their young fullbacks and have given the ball more. As they say they've added a play for the fullback this year. Instead of two to worry about, they've got three. That's right. Most normally they're just blockers. Bo says get your head in there and block somebody. Garrett now three carries and 15 yards. So it's been Rodgers and Smith on the ground attack. Hall wants to go to the air. Firing to Johnson. Incomplete at Washington State's 40-yard line. That's some pretty good coverage that time. Covering on the play was Atkins, the left cornerback. Once again, though, Ray, a first down pass. How many times have you seen both throw this many first down passes in an opening game? I think he revised his playbook already, <laughs> huh? Well, I think, I think David Hall is, because he's the quarterback, has given him that opportunity. I think we'd see the option uh, on first down if Steve Smith were playing, but he's not. So we're going to the first down pass, and I think that's got Washington State a little bit bucky. Second attempt for the Wolverines. They lead this game 7-0 with four minutes to go in the opening quarter. The handoff, no fake handoff. Oh, they did give to Rodgers. A good fake by Hall as he handed to Rodgers. And Keith Millard that time found himself free to make the stop. A draw play. And uh, it didn't work at all. Again, the most concerned area of the game the Michigan coaches felt was the front seven people, the linebackers and the four down linemen for Washington State. And since that opening drive, Michigan really hasn't been able to do much with the Washington State front. Cougars have adjusted a little bit. That time, Rodgers losing three yards. So it's third and 13 at the 45 for the Wolverines. And Hall wanting to go to the air. Had a man over the middle, but he was almost tackled. Now a carry. 45, 43-yard line of Washington State. In there to greet him was Gerard Waters to make the first hit on him. Moving in quickly also the cornerback, Cedric Brown. Very close to the first down. And there's one of the things you see that the difference between a Steve Smith and a David Hall. David Hall's a fine quarterback, but not as mobile, not as quick as Steve Smith. Steve Smith in that situation, had he been forced out of the pocket to run, probably would have picked up that first down. But David Hall is not as accomplished a runner, although he provides Michigan with a little better action as far as the passing game and the power quarterbacking game goes. Well, he's forced to carry twice so far in this ball game for a total of 19. He came up shy by a yard, double tight end in for Michigan as they want to power it for the first down if they can. On the carry, it's Rogers over tackle, gets the first down, close to the 40 yard line. As the Wolverines stay on the ground this time to collect their fifth first down of the opening quarter. Well, a real good offensive line search in tight for Michigan to get that first down. And I was thinking, if Rick Rogers would have bounced that outside, he might have never been caught because everybody for Washington State was bunched up inside. I know Rogers was thinking, get the first down, get the first down. As experience comes, Rick Rogers will remember, bounce that play outside on occasion when he sees that end crashing down. He can bust it outside a long way. Dean split wide to the left. Giovanni Johnson wide to the right with Garrett and Rogers. Rogers carries, tries to hit the guard position. Tripped up at the 40-yard line, just about where they started at the line of scrimmage. Might have got one yard at the most. Pat Lynch again, the nose guard, to make the first hit. Well, actually, a little less than a yard. So for all practical purposes, let's call it second down and 10. But again, there, there, there you go, first down play, and it's a draw play. He's, he's trying to make it. Washington State think he's going to throw that first down pass. Comes back with the draw this time. So on first down, Michigan's doing some interesting things we haven't seen him do in a while. This will be the ninth play of the drive for Michigan. 
Rogers going outside. He looked a little hesitant there as if he wanted to go against the green once he got outside. Then he elected to stay with the slant, got inside the 35-yard line, tripped up by Carrillo, and arrived on the scene close to the 33. So that'll be third down and just about two yards for the Wolverines. And again, we'll go to a double tight end. As checking in is Carthens. Rogers has carried for 28 yards. Rogers carries again, getting outside, taking his man with him, and trying to pick up that first down as he carried Eric Williams with him for about a yard. And we may get a measurement. It was a third and one on that carry. Officials time out. They'll do a little measuring right now with the yardsticks. As Michigan is very close to keeping this drive alive. Jim Kemmerling, our referee. Frank Strosha, the umpire. Headlinesman Richard Weller this afternoon. Line judge Ed Marisich. Field judge is Bob Moore. Side judge is Chuck. Just a bottle and a bike just town fine, and the officials say first down Wolverine. At the 30 yard line, just inside the 31 of Washington State, it'll be first and 10 for the Wolverine. Rogers has been the workhorse so far, seven carries for 29 yards on this drive. Sim Nelson, the tight end, moving from the left side to the right. Rogers in that tailback position. And again, picking up a pretty good block from Rice that time. A flag goes down inside the 30-yard line. We'll see if maybe a little bit of holding, but it was Rice leading the way for Rogers. Might have got a yard on the carry. And it was holding against the Wolverines. And it might have been Rice up there, too. You know, that, that good block gets a lot better when you hold on. <laughs> the only thing wrong with that is sometimes the referee catches you. Third penalty against the Wolverines as they march this one back just inside the 40-yard line for a total of 23 yards. Holding against the Wolverines for that third penalty. We're down to six seconds in the first quarter. Michigan leading by a score of seven to nothing. It'll be first and 19. And time runs out. So that's the play in the first quarter for the opener of 1983 with the Wolverine seven. The Cougars of Washington State, nothing. I'm Ray Lane along with Jim Brownstatter. It's been an interesting first quarter. I think play selection wise, we're a little bit surprised at Michigan, Jim. Yeah. And I think the reason is because they've got a quarterback in there that isn't your option quarterback. Steve Smith was the man, uh, the starter, uh, until he injured the shoulder. David Hall is the guy that's the quarterback. He is more of a drop back passer, more in the mold of a John Wangler. But impressive is Michigan's defense. Holding Washington State to minus three yards rushing in the first quarter, right? If they can do that all season long, they're going to be an awfully good football team. First of 19 at the Cougars 39 yard line. That is Rice in the wing back position on the right side. One lone running back in behind Hall. And trying to pass on it. He had the man open and interception. It could go all the way. Could go all the way as Joe Taylor. Strong side safety took it off the fingertips of Sim Nelson, the tight end, and races down for the Cougars for their first score, going 62 yards. Big, big play by Washington State. The reason David Hall throws this ball a little too high, and the reason is probably he gets a big rush from the outside. Nelson hits it in the air. One of the things receivers have to remember is tip balls usually 50% of the time are picked off. And in that situation, because the pass was out in the flat where there weren't a lot of people around, he was able to pick the ball off and go the distance for the touchdown. And that really has got to make Washington State feel good about themselves in this game, having been dominated early. John Trott, the extra point try. He was one for one last week, and he is perfection on this one. 
So on the opening play of the second quarter, Michigan trying to surprise Washington State on the passing play. Couldn't do it, and it's intercepted. The extra point is good. And with 14.48 to go in the first half, we've got a 7-7 ball game. Washington State's John Trott all set to kick it off to Michigan. Here in the early moments of the second quarter, Giovanni Johnson along with Steve Johnson and the twin safeties for Michigan both standing at the goal line. So Trot, young man out of Laguana Hills, California. Boots this one off on a sidewinder about five yards back and Giovanni Johnson elects it not to bring it out so Michigan will start it at their own 20. And here's the pass again that Washington State scored on and David Hall threw the ball up a little too high for his tight end Sim Nelson and Joe Taylor standing back at his quarterback safety position just was able to pick off the tip ball and go the distance and Michigan now finds themselves in a real ball game and that's one of the things that can really hurt momentum. Washington State defensively had picked things up after Michigan's opening drive to score and then uh, Michigan comes back and really hands Washington State a touchdown and Ray. You know, really, right now, it's anybody's ball game, and the heat still is out there, and it's playing a factor. There you get an idea of how it took uh, Washington State to do in that <laughs> Didn't take them quarter. long, did it? No, it did not. Michigan, it was a shame, had controlled the ball for five minutes and 19 seconds on 11 plays before that interception. So they're trying again, first and 10 at the 20-yard line, reverse, and coming around is Steve Johnson to his right side. Got a pretty good block that time from... Lineman Stephon Humphreys who did a good man of blowing his man out. So that's the first look at that one today. I want to talk to Schembeck, their psychiatrist. <laughs> on first down in the first half, he's been throwing the ball around. Here we are, first and ten on his own 20, and he runs a reverse. I mean, we're talking some fun here, Ray, this year. Ray, uh, Bo is uh, Bo's getting fun. Just shy of inches of that first down on the carry by Steve Johnson on the reverse. He comes out of the lineup. Vince Bean checks back in. Double tight end on the short yardage now for the Wolverines. And going straight ahead, the fullback on the carry, Greg Armstrong, has the first down. And the Wolverines collect their first first down of the second quarter. Yeah, it, it looks like a simple straight play by the uh, fullback running up over the middle. But one of the things you notice is Michigan doesn't even move the tailback. The linebackers, watch them, for Washington State, they're standing dead still because that tailback hasn't done anything. And they run both guards out on the linebackers. The tailback, if he moves one way or the other, the linebackers react. The tailback, Kerry Smith, stayed absolutely still, and that gave Eddie Garrett, the fullback, a chance, or Armstrong, rather, a chance to get yardage. Kerry Smith on the carry this time. Breaks outside. And finally hauled out. Coming up was Atkins, the cornerback. You know, you're talking, he got a good block from Humphreys that time to free up that extra yardage. In the films that we took a look at yesterday, Jim, we noticed how far those linebackers, a good five yards off the line of scrimmage. Well, Washington State feels so confident in their front four down people that they are going to play their linebackers off the ball a little bit and let them fill. But the problem against Michigan is you've got two outstanding guards. You've got Humphreys as an All-American and Belortis and Diorio, who have got good experience the other guard, and they're able to get out on him. Tom Dixon up over that ball now. Second and four for the Wolverines. A little movement along the line of scrimmage on both teams to see who is who as far as drawing them off on that second and four. Smith, by the way, on that last carry, was his fifth carry of the ball game, has a total of 23 yards. Dario might have been the man that was doing a little movement down there in Michigan. Yeah, and I'll tell you what happened. Watch Dario, the left guard. He'll react to the defensive tackles move down. See, Dario takes that step early. That was one of those poor calls an offensive lineman has no excuse for moving, but he's up there, springed, ready to go. Somebody over there on the other side moves. You want to move, and that's the thing that happened. He just anticipated the count a half a second. And that really has to be a quick reaction on the part of that offensive lineman, not to overreact on that. Fourth penalty against the Wolverines, a total of 28 yards. Second down and nine at the 34-yard line of Michigan. And Hall going back to pass. Little swing pass coming out this time to Armstrong. And Armstrong trying to get to the 40-yard line does. 
shy of the first down by maybe four yards. You know, I like Washington State, Jim, as far as the way they react to the little swing passes, the short passes. They don't do many fancy things with their coverages, and I think that's why Michigan is trying to... You, we haven't seen Michigan throw the ball down the field, down the middle. Every Maybe pass not. we've seen Hall throw and complete has been out into the flat or to the tight end. I think they're trying to force Washington State secondary out into the perimeter area, and then they're going to bust something back down the middle. Maybe Vincent Bean with a post pattern or Johnson. Michigan third down and three. Hall now five for seven, good for 32 yards. And a costly interception, however. On the short yardage, trying to find somebody open, doesn't do it. Reverses, comes back over to the hash mark, gets the first down, and then takes plenty of punishment to get that first down. He got a good block, however, by Kerry Smith to free him, and he could cut back to his left. And so Michigan collects the first down at their 48. It's a straight rollout, and it's a good play fake. It held the linebackers inside. Now he gets outside, breaks contain. David Hall knows where the first down is, cuts it back up inside. A good block by Kerry Smith, and then he gets drilled. Knocked down, but he got enough for the first down. Michigan now putting together another good offensive drive. We might tell you Hall, when he played in 82 season during the regular season on four carries, with a minus two yards. Today he has carried three times and has 27 yards. So he has certainly done a lot better than he did when he was in there in 1982. Well, I think Bo did a good job on Hall that time. And he let him roll out and let him get outside to get some room to run. First down and 10 for Michigan at the 49-yard line. The tailback carry this time is Rogers doing a little of his own shuffling there to get a couple of extra yards and gets across the 50 to about the 46-yard line before he is greeted by Steve Hobb, the free safety. Michigan, by the way, with nine first downs, and eight of the nine have come via the rush. Rodgers now on that the last carry with a total of 35 yards gain in this ball game. 11.02 to go in the first half. We've got a 7-7 ball game. Michigan struck first on a six-yard scoring pass from Hall to Garrett. And the extra point was good, but then on the interception of the first play in the second quarter, Joe Taylor picked it off and went 62 yards. The point after was good to make it 7-7. Coming out to Rodgers on the pass across the 40-yard line. He has the first down. Wrestled finally to the turf by the outside linebacker, inside linebacker, Lee Blakeney. And that's that new formation where they will take the tailback out of the eye formation and put Rick Rodgers over there as a wingback. That isolates him in certain defenses against the linebacker. And no linebacker is going to be able to cover a tailback one-on-one. -on -one. In a zone coverage, they're going to give a tailback a lot of room because they know what he can do when he gets the ball in open field. Jim, that just forces what? A man-on-man -man coverage? Forces man-on-man -man or forces him to take a linebacker with him. All good now. Six for eight for 39 yards. He's going to try his ninth pass right now. He's got a man open! was intended for Steve Johnson and coming up there in a hurry was Hobb who really let Johnson have it to break up that play. Once again, I think the ball thrown a little bit high. Uh, it looked a little bit like David Hall is not following through with his passes. He's kind of throwing it in there. He's, he's, he's looking to force it in, not force it, but he's aiming the ball. Uh, usually you see quarterbacks throws in the pros in situations like this. That right arm will come snapping through there. I think David just tried to aim this one in and just let it float up a little bit too high. And you could tell with he was getting some great blocking that time from Miller, Belurtis, Nixon, Humphreys, and James. Boy, he had plenty of time. So it'll be second down at 10. And we've got a timeout. Michigan now has run 18 plays in a row. And that includes the interception in between. So we've got a timeout with 10.22 to go. It's Michigan 7, Washington State 7. You get an idea what David Hall has done thus far in the ballgame with 10.22 to go in the first half. Michigan's second and 10. And on the sweep is Rodgers, and the ball goes out of bounds. Michigan getting a bit of a break that time. Rodgers on the carry going to the left side. Got close to the 35-yard line of the Cougars before that ball squirted loose. Getting some pretty good pursuit that side by Carrillo, the linebacker. Injured Cougar player on the far side of the field right in front of Washington State's bench. And 
that may be Carrillo who made the tackle the hit it was down now Michigan you talk about using the clock while well, we have a timeout on the Washington State injury has had the ball since five minutes and seven seconds left in the first quarter so they've held the ball for more than ten minutes nothing to show for it except the Washington State interception and a touchdown yeah I was gonna say Ray uh, you know ball control is wonderful but this may be one of those games where statistics and time of possession don't matter uh, one of the things that is important is how many points you put on the board and I think more important than anything let's take a look and see Rick Rogers turning the corner and here's where the injury occurred Rogers does a good job lowering his head right into the tackle Cedric Brown it appeared to me to be the, the, the guy that was hurt. I'm not exactly sure, Ray, but uh, it was Rodgers that really caused that, that hit because he had a real good steam coming around that corner, and he lowered a shoulder, which is what running backs are supposed to do. All right, Brown stays in the ball game. Carrillo has gone out, and Michigan now with a third and seven at the 36 of Washington State. All to try the air again, and he had Nelson, the tight end, open. but good enough to catch. Yeah, uh, the pass should have been caught, Ray. Uh, David Hall, of course, threw the first one way high over here on that first down attempt to Steve Johnson. Came back to Sim Nelson, who is a fine tight end, who has caught, uh, I believe, two passes already this afternoon, and that one was very catchable. Uh, Sim just dropped it. Fourth down and seven, so Michigan has converted twice out of six times on the third down conversions at Bracken back to punt. He's standing back at his own rather at the midfield stripe the 50 yard line a line of scrimmage at the 36 of Washington State trying to make it a short one and be down but can't get the right bounce on it hits it about the three yard line and skips into the end zone for the touchback 10 0 2 to go in the first half it's Michigan 7 Washington State 7. Bracken with a couple of punts this afternoon. He has 42 and a half yards on average in those two punts. Turner pitching out this time. A flag has gone down on the backfield of Washington State, and that was LeBaum on the carry. Trying yeah. to get outside. And I think we'll see an illegal crackback block or a illegal block on the play, Ray, because Carlton Rose playing that short side linebacker was cut down from behind on a crackback from the wide receiver. I think Washington State is going to have uh, problems take a look at the play you see the ball carrier on their pitch sweep LeBaum he's coming out he's doing a real good job but to the left of the screen there's Carlton Rose getting blocked from behind that will put Washington back five yards only the Cougars second penalty for a total of 20 yards ball back at their 15 yard line now it'll be first down and 15 for Washington State Ricky Turner, the quarterback. LeBaum is in there at one of the running back positions. May, the other one. And a long count this time by the Cougars. That was the option. Fumble and recovered Michigan. Still scrambling around, and Michigan still has it on the second try. And coming up with that ball may have been Al Sensich, the nose guard. Inside, it looks like was the man I think number 53 you see him diving on the ball but he was also the guy that caused the fumble right he shot through the gap and as Turner was coming down the line of scrimmage holding the ball ready to option and ride the fullback since it's got a hand on the ball it bounced free and then he hustled back to get the fumble that's a great play by number 53 the middle guard I have a second turnover this ball game the first one, of course, the interception by the Wolverines have resulted in a Washington State touchdown, and now the Wolverines hoping that they can turn around a mistake by Washington State and take it in for a score. First and 10 at the 12-yard line. Smith on the carry. Carry Smith inside the 10, close to the 8-yard line. There's plenty of power that time on the right side. Lee Blakeney, the linebacker on the inside on the right side, making the stop. Now, uh, Carry Smith is not a, a big kid, but Blakeney who's 6'1", 235, and Smith ran into him in the hole, and Blakeney was the guy who had to give yardage. Kerry Smith's a tough little back. He doesn't look that powerful, but I'll tell you, he's low to the ground, and he's got some good power in those legs. 
You know, we talk about the quarterbacks. Hall not regarded as far as a runner. He is 327 yards on the carry. Turner, who's a runner, is three for a minus 13 from Washington State. Rodgers outside. He goes in to score. Starting from the eight-yard line. It was second and six. And it goes eight yards for Michigan's second afternoon on the touchdown. A lot of credit should go to both tight ends, especially number 83, Milt Parsons, you see running back to the huddle. He had to get a linebacker and log him inside and sustain it because the outside man came up and forced Rodgers back inside, and Parsons got the inside linebacker and did not let him get outside, and that really opened it up to the end zone for Rodgers. Schlopey to try for his second uh, extra point of the afternoon. Michigan out in front, 13 to 7, 8.44 to go. Harbaugh will hold it on the attempt. And it is up and good. So Michigan takes the lead, 14 to 7. It's a straight slant play given to the fullback, or tailback. The fullback kicks out. Now Rodgers goes inside. Now watch 83. There he is right there holding on. He makes a good block on that linebacker, sustaining it from the snap of the ball, and that was what freed Rodgers to go into the end zone. The Wolverines have taken a 14-7 lead with 8.44 left to go in the first half. On that quick drive that took only 46 uh, seconds, 47 seconds, two plays by Michigan to get the score from Rodgers on eight yards. And this time, uh, kick that is taken by Washington State and returned up to the 30-yard line. Rodgers, by the way, now with 10 carries for 46 yards and that one touchdown. 8.39 to go in the first half. And for Washington State, one of the times that they've had a little better field position at their own 30-yard line. Idea of that quick drive by Michigan. And set up by a Michigan turnover by Al Sensich. So you ought to give him a little credit in there. Interesting kickoff, Ray. Uh, Slopey didn't kick it high in the air into the end zone. He kind of scooted it down. I think that was by design. I don't think it was a mistake. At the 29 yard line of Washington State, they'll start uh, this first down and 10 situation. And the right end might have been moving over there. A flag goes down on a pitch out. And a new quarterback in there for Washington State as Mark Rippon. Rippon has come in there for his first appearance of the afternoon, and he is regarded as a pure passer. He is a lot like what you'd think David Hall is. Right. David Hall is six foot four, a 200 pound strong kid with a strong arm. Uh, Rippon is similar oh, to Mark uh, David Hall in that sense. He's a big, strong kid who they like to throw <laughs> with more. Ricky Turner is their scrambler, their option quarterback, like Steve Smith. So now we're gonna see, I think, a different game plan from Washington State and that's going to force Michigan to do some different things I think mainly in pass coverage because Rippon is the guy that can throw that ball down the middle of the field whereas Turner is more the runner and I think Michigan's pass defense is going to have to wake up here a little. Rippon a sophomore out of Spokane. It's first and 15 for Washington State against Montana State. The youngster was 5 for 14 last week. D.D. Moore trying to come around from his put in position on a little bit of a reverse and got nowhere. Got to the 20-yard line and the flag has gone down. Rodney Lyles, Michigan's outside linebacker, was there to greet him. The outside linebacker, Rodney Lyles, also got clipped. So he did a great job and that is the end's responsibility. He is not to allow anybody to break contain. All the flow is going to the right. Here comes the reverse. But watch, Rodney Lyles will force him back inside. He is outside, taking an outside go, and there's the blocker trying to get him, but gets him from behind. That's a clip and a great play, or they could take the loss of down. You saw number 44 also in that replay, John Lott. Lott, of course, is the cornerback, weak side halfback for Michigan. He was going to try to contain him, but didn't have to. That's a good play by Lyles. Flipping is a call, Jim. And Michigan will take the penalty, and it'll force Washington State now with Rippon, their throwing quarterback, in a situation where they're backed up against their own goal line. I don't think they're going to want to throw the ball out of here. So Michigan, again, got both things going in their favor on defense because they can gamble and take chances because it's first and forever. First and 30 to be exact at the Washington State 10-yard line. And going to the air, the pass is for Mays. It's completed. Gets across the 15 to the 16-yard line. 
coming in there to make the stop on him. Mike Bourne was coming out. And as well, got some more help in there from Rose and also for Brad Cochran. And nice to see Cochran back in the Michigan uniform. It really is. Brad Cochran sat out last year, and uh, uh, Bo Schembechler said that he came back, dedicated to play football, and is probably playing the best of his life right now at the cornerback for Michigan. Gain of seven on that last pass, second down at 23. That was Mays in motion as they flooded the right side. And they go to Marshall, juggling that. Did he hang on to it? He couldn't. He had three shots at him as he finally got up to his own 38-yard line. And the young junior college transfer out of Glendale, California, couldn't find the handle. Well, they forced Michigan outside. They're doing a similar thing that Michigan is doing when they put their running back on a wing. That forces coverage down the middle by the safety. Watch it here. There are two outside guys both being covered. The receiver runs right down the middle with nobody there to cover. That's because they're forcing Michigan to cover the outside guys, leaving the middle open. Okay, this will be the third attempt at a third down conversion for Washington State. They are 0 for 2, and they have third and 23 at their own 17-yard line. Rippin' back to pass. Going to go over the middle. This time, Marshall finds the handle and is down at the 35-yard line. Cochran in there to make the tackle. So they'll be shy of the first down by about five yards. But again, Ray, something we should look at for the possible fact that it may happen again in the second half. Michigan, they found, Washington State found a, an opening there in the middle of that secondary. And I think they're now going to go more to the middle with their throwing quarterback and force those safeties back in toward the middle. Glenn Harper back to punt. Johnson waiting for the good spiral coming down inside his 20-yard line, about the 18. And he'll get two or three yards out of that, and that'll be it. So Michigan now has run a total of 34 plays. Washington State a total of 15. We've got 644 to go in the first half, and Michigan leading 14 to 7. And they'll start uh, possession this time at their own 23-yard line. You know, you talk about the number of plays a team has been out there. Michigan offensively has been running a controlled, steady, power-type football game with a few passes thrown in there and one reverse. But more importantly, the weather here in Michigan over the last two weeks, Ray, has been very hot. Michigan's have been practicing double sessions in this hot weather. Washington State's had cooler weather out in Pullman and Spokane, and as this game wears on in this kind of heat on the artificial surface, the defense may wilt a little for the Cougars. And, of course, Bo will keep the backs fresh, running them in and out. And that time on the carry at the tailback position was Brian Mercer for his first carry. So Mercer is in there at the tailback position and will stay in. He got uh, maybe three yards on that carry, got across the 25-yard line to the 31-yard line. It'll be second down and seven. Mercer looking back a year ago with 33 carries for the Wolverines. His longest gallop was for 18 yards. Rice in at the fullback position ahead of Mercer. The pitch out going to Mercer this time. Gets outside, cuts back in, and finally driven out of bounds. And it'll be close to the first down. And once again, Michigan is attacking the perimeter, the ends on uh, Washington State. Apparently, Washington State hasn't adjusted that well outside, and Michigan still feels that they want to go outside. Michigan's all Big Ten center, Tom Dixon, is doing a pretty good job against the Washington State middle guard. That is uh, Milford Hodge. Milford Hodge is the middle guard in there. And Dixon, of course, one of the great centers in the country. Uh, Bo says that there aren't many in the country better than uh, Tom Dixon. Of course, he's on... The offensive line right next to Stephon Humphreys. And when those two double team you, Ray, you can be in a lot of trouble. By the way, we'll just uh, let our fans know that 76, Mr. Humphreys, <laughs> where's that one? Was Jim Brandstetter's old number, right? In 1980 or 71. 1971. I don't want to make you too young. Ray. All right. <laughs> Michigan trying to get that first down as they had third and one, and they do have their first down. So the Wolverines. Continue possession of that ball at 5.57 to go. The only problem with that, Ray, is that Stefan says now that I wore his number. <laughs> <laughs> That's 11 first downs for the Wolverines, and Washington State looking for its first first down. However, we got a 14-7 ball game. Wolverines on top. So it's first and 10 for Michigan. Rice the fullback. 
directly in behind Hall. Mercer is the tailback with number 41 on his jersey. And as Mercer trying to get outside, does, gets across the 40, up to around the 42-yard line. Blakeney, the linebacker on that right side, making the initial hit. Well, I tell you, they're not being shy to go to the outside at all today. No, and, and, and again, you can see they're attacking outside the end. Mercer kicks it outside, cuts it back up, si up inside, gets good block from the fullback, who's his lead back. And, you know, anytime on first down, you can get eight yards on a running play. Why not do it? Mercer, since he's been on there with 18 yards to his credit, Michigan second down, a two, double tight end. Fumble this time, Mercer finds the bounce, but will not get back to the line of scrimmage. Pitch out came right to him, but the Stone Fingers couldn't hang on to it. It'll be a loss for the Wolverines back to around their own 36, 37-yard line. And again, the play designed to go outside. These are the kinds of things on a day like today that can hurt you, the simple little mistake. And a, and a tailback drops the ball, and Bo's got so many of them, that tailback is coming out. Kerry Smith now back into the game for Michigan at tailback. And Rick Rogers, I'm sure, will get a lesson in holding on to the football when he gets to the bench. Well, there was no doubt about it. That we're Brian gonna Mercer. Win. Yeah, Mercer was not going to be uh, given another chance right away. <laughs> Third down and seven. A good pick by Hall going back. Instead, they go up the middle, shy of the first down by a couple of yards. And some pretty good tackling in there by the nose guard that time, Hodge of Washington State. So Michigan shy of the first down. It'll be fourth and three. And again, a mistake cost them that drive. They had second down and two, turned into a third and nine because of the fumble. Now Michigan forced to punt. Back to receive that punt is Kendrick Taylor. Bracken to punt it for Michigan. Just about 42 and a half yards is average so far in the punting department. Taylor takes it at his own 15 yard line. And look at the coverage by Michigan. Getting down Bale. And as far as Taylor was concerned, he had no place to go. Brad Cochran leading the way. Also coming down there to help out Rodney Lyles. Great coverage would give Bracken a lot of credit too because he drilled that up into the sky and he had great hang time. And you can see Taylor waiting for it, waiting for it, waiting for it. And when he catches it, there are four and five guys. Brad Cochran over there forces him back inside. And Mallory is in there to make the stop. Michigan, great special teams coverage. And give Bracken down with his punts this afternoon, an average of 45 yards. The option, and straight up the middle this time, is a carry by Mays. And once again, it was Rippon staying in there at quarterback. He has taken over for the starter, Ricky Turner. And Mays carries for his biggest gain of the afternoon, Washington State's biggest gain. Well, it's, this is a fake pitch, Ray, and I think this is what cost uh, Michigan this play. Fake pitch and then ran the dive back right through the middle. That's the first time Michigan's seen it. They were so concerned of getting to the outside to stop Mays from getting to the perimeter, they left the middle open. Second and two, eight yards on that last carry by Mays. Mays tries to go right over the middle again, close to the first down. If he gets it, it'll be Washington State's first of the afternoon. Al Sensich, who was pulled on the previous play, comes right up there and recovers that time and makes the tackle. First down, Cougars. Michigan with 10 first downs. The Cougars with their first. We're down to 250 in the first half. It's the Wolverines 14, Washington State 7 and a packed house here at Ann Arbor's Michigan Stadium. Warm, muggy afternoon. At the 22, first and 10. And a quick little look in that time. The pass going to Kerry Porter. The fullback, Carlton Rose, over there to cover quickly. I think really more of a confidence builder for Rippon. Jim Walden, the coach at Washington State, gave Rippon the chance to throw a very safe pass, but he drilled it. So I think Rippon's got a little bit of confidence now going because he's had the opportunity there to throw that one. He's hit a couple earlier in the previous drive. I expect we'll see Washington State doing a lot more play action type passing with Rippon in the ball game. He saw some action against Montana State a week ago, and after the game, that was exactly what Jim Walden said, a little too intense for his first ball game. 
It is second and seven for the Cougars. Rippon getting plenty of time, and a great catch made by John Marshall, number 18. As he gets it across the 40 to the 44-yard line, Brad Cochran smothers him at the 44. Ray, you talked to me earlier about what it does when that wing back is put on the line of scrimmage. He is isolated here on the linebacker, Mallory. Rippon makes a great throw right over the top. Even though Mallory has fairly decent coverage, he can't cover a guy like Marshall all by himself. So it goes for the completion in the first down. This is Taylor in motion, Kedrick Taylor. And the option play and the keeper carrying that time was Rippon. Trying to get outside, picked up a few yards. Stopped in there by Carlton Rose. Ball be shy of the 50 at about the 48 yard line of Washington State. Second down and six, and we're down to 120 to go in the opening half. And Washington State hitting those passes has really loosened Michigan up defensively a little bit. Now they just can't watch for the run and the option. Because they hit the passes, the option with Rippon may go a little better because those linebackers are a little more wary of the pass. Send Porter in motion. They slot to the left. A quick look in that time, and Rippon is off his mark as that one that time was intended for the tight end, Vince Layton, and the flag is going down. Just a pattern of a little quick look in with a tight end cutting across. And we had motion that time by Washington State. Well, Michigan march it off, and it will still be second down. Otherwise, third down and six, and they turn over the down box. And they're going to keep it right there. John Lott conferring with the officials and watching the Michigan bench to see the way Bull wanted that penalty to go. And they say, no, thank you. Just turn it over and make it third and six. Rippon now four for six for a total of 46 yards since he came in here in the second quarter. And down to one minute and two seconds to go in the first half. It's Michigan 14, Washington State nothing. Seven defensive backs in, huh? I thought you 14, were 14-7 the score. What did I say? 14 nothing. Oh, I'm sorry. 14 to seven. Get Excuse your glasses. Me. I thought you told me there was 14 defensive backs in there. And Jennifer Marshall, incomplete. Mallory in there to greet him. Good, good gamble by Michigan to decline the penalty. Inside, pass a little bit behind him. But Marshall knew Mallory was there. He knew it because he was a little tentative on that catch, and then Mallory stuck him good. Glenn Harper, the putter, and Giovanni Johnson back and backing up down to around his five-yard line to take the punt. Gets across the 10, just about the 11-yard line, so he picks up close to five on the punt return. And Michigan deep in their own territory with 48 seconds to go in the first half. The reason I thought it was a good gamble for Michigan to turn that penalty down, Ray, is because they gambled in and get the ball back. If they take the penalty, it's second down, and Washington State gets the ball for two more downs before they have to kick. Or if they get a first down, they can close out the first half and try a long field goal. And it was so much said about Michigan maybe really rebuilding in a secondary coming into this season. Also tells you, I think, that Bo Schimbeckler and staff says, hey, I've got confidence in the secondary. Absolutely. Not only that, but he's got confidence in the entire defense. I think it gives the linebackers a good feeling to know that Bo will go with him on a second down and five, and they'll let him sit, take the third and five and try to stop him. Now Michigan's got the ball back. First and ten at Michigan's 12-yard line, and up the middle on the carries, Kerry Smith, as he gets across the 15, close to the 17-yard line. As the Wolverines will probably be very content here to sort of run out the clock being in their own territory deep in their own territory inside their 20 yard line they'll mark it down at the 17. Smith now is carried for 36 yards in eight carries 23 seconds remaining here in the first half. I'm not sure whether Bo is going to air it out here with this little time left he may be contented to stay on the ground but he might run Steve Johnson or Gilvani or Vince Bean down deep and try to run a fly pattern and hit him. Nope. To the fullback, straight ahead that time, close to the 20-yard line. He had Vince Bean out, split to the, one, uh, to the right. And, of course, to the left, it was Steve Johnson. The time has run out, and that's the end of the first half. And the Wolverines will go to the locker room, leading Washington State by a score of 14-7. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Brandstetter, and every week during the fall, I have fun arguing with the head football coach at Michigan, 
Bo Schembechler. It's more a discussion than argument. The show is called Michigan Replay, and we'd like you to join us each week as we analyze every game and scout our next opponent. We also feature behind-the-scenes aspects of the Michigan program, and sometimes we even give Bo a chance to speak his mind on controversial subjects involving the college game. And, of course, that's always a barrel of laughs. And you thought I had an easy job. <laughs> Will you give more? Well, I'll tell you, uh, offensive-wise, Michigan has dominated the first half, but despite dominating in the air and on the ground, they are just ahead by seven points, 14 to seven. Well, Ray, two mistakes have really hurt them. The one interception for a touchdown that, uh, that Joe Taylor returned, uh, and it made it 7-7 ball game for Washington State. And there was another play where they were driving, and Brian Mercer made a fumble. And the Wolverines really lost a chance at a drive. But you can see the stats here. Michigan is dominating. 191 total yards, and the rushing yards are incredible. But the statistics really don't matter. It's what's on the scoreboard, and it's 14-7 right now. Michigan, it's still a ball game. It certainly is, and both of those turnovers, one by Michigan, one by Washington State, have resulted in the score. Right, and I think in the second half, we are going to see Riffin, the Washington State quarterback that a little better of a thrower of the two, and I think he's going to put a lot more pressure on the Michigan secondary. And that's going to be a key in the second half, what Michigan secondary does against Rippon, because I think he feels a little bit more confident that he can throw the ball against Michigan, whereas he's going to have trouble running. Ah, yes, the Michigan Sunbenders are out in full force this afternoon here at Michigan Stadium, over 100,000. And, of course, the Wolverines cheerleaders having plenty of fun at the expense of the Cougars of Washington State. It's 14-7 to at halftime. We'll have that second half kickoff in just a moment. The second half of University of Michigan football is brought to you by Stroh Signature, the beer with something extra. And by America's largest carpet retailer, New York Carpet World, the better carpet people. And by Highland Appliance, everything you never expected from an appliance store. And Republic Airlines, nobody serves our Republic like Republic. John Trott all set to kick off for Washington State to get this second half underway. Giovanni Johnson and Steve Johnson back at the goal line for Michigan. And there'll be no return as this one floats way out of bounds on the far side of the field. So Michigan will go to work first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Some thoughts going into the second half, Ray. Last week against Montana State, Washington State was in uh, trouble. They were tied with them, came up with three second-half touchdowns to win that game. I don't know whether that could happen here this afternoon. I think Michigan's defense is a lot tougher than uh, Montana State's was, but Washington State has been in this situation before this season. So it's going to be an interesting second half from that standpoint to see what Washington State does offensively with Rippin at quarterback and also to see what Washington State's defense can do about Michigan controlling the football. David Hall continues at quarterback for Michigan. The running back Sprague Armstrong at the fullback position. And Rogers at the tailback. Rogers with the carry. He's got five, got ten, and goes out of bounds. They say he picked up seven yards and went out of bounds at the 27-yard line. So Rogers to start the first half on the line of scrimmage takes the pitch out, goes seven yards along the far side of the field, and steps out at the 27. And Michigan once again attacking the perimeter. The key here, the fullback's block. Out in front of Rogers. He knocks down the defensive tackle, Millard. And that allows Rodgers a chance to turn the corner, and he stepped out of bounds, as you saw, after the seven-yard game. Rodgers has carried seven times for 53 yards in this ball game. A second half just underway. Third down and three for Michigan, or rather second and three for Michigan. And going straight up the middle, side of the first down. The Wolverines again, Rodgers carried. Now he got about a yard and a half, and Rico Tipton, the linebacker, in there to make the initial hit. Just shy of that first down by a yard. Third and one for the Wolverines. Take a look at, at uh, Washington State's linebackers and how they react. They're five yards off the ball at the start, but boy, I tell you, they fill in a hurry. And there you saw Tipton, 98 right up inside, and Michigan's got to get some guards out to block those two guys. Giovanni Johnson split wide to the right. Tight end was in motion, and trying to get the first yard is Rogers, stretching out. Did his knee go down 
at the 29 or did he make it in time if he got they give him to the 30 yard line we'll wait and see they unpile very close to the first down boy a good second effort and he may be inches short Trying to get that ball up to the 30 yard line as you can see he is shy Elkinton outside linebacker really helped on that one and came up and moved over quickly to fill up that gap so it's no go for Michigan at the first attempt for the first down of the second half fourth down and inches and Bracken back for the punt That is Taylor at the 30. That'll move up to around his 38-yard line for the fair catch. And so Washington State will put the ball in play close to the 39-yard line, their own 39, with 13-10 to go in the third quarter. It's Michigan 14, Washington State 7. The company said they had... Mark Rippon has given way now to Turner and you can see the left tackle and that's Flager in a little motion there trying to get back in time he couldn't do it but Turner has come back at quarterback to start this third quarter after giving way to Rippon in the second quarter and Ray that's somewhat surprising because Ricky Turner had been ineffective in that first half against Michigan's defense whereas Rippon had thrown the ball fairly decently and he found Marshall open over the middle on a couple of occasions and gotten Washington State out of a hole. I'm somewhat surprised that Walden has gone back to Ricky Turner unless he feels that Turner was suffering from a little bit of first half jitters in front of this huge crowd because last week against Washington or Montana State they only had 27,000 for their home opener. Here they've got 105,000, and maybe Ricky Turner just wasn't ready for this. And he's back in the game now, and I think Walden probably go the rest of the way with him unless they get way behind. And it was ironic that a week ago the same thing happened to Turner. He had the jitters in the first half, and he was the quarterback that came back in the second half and fired for three touchdown passes. That gave Washington State the win. So he's back in there now in the place of Rippon. Turner was a starter. That is the fourth penalty against Washington State for a total of 35 yards. First down at 15. And Turner unloads this time and fires at the TD. Moore breaks the tackle. Got around Cochran. And Moore, with a second effort, gets close to the 48-yard line. Finally hauled down by Tom Hassel. A good pass in that Turner comes off the ball and he's looking all the time right. He's overloading the zone right now. He comes back to the backside. And really, the Michigan defense is kind of backed off out there. And you've seen Moore break the tackle by Cochran. Watch this hustle by Cochran off the ground and back in on it after Hassel knocks him down. Second and one for the Cougars. And the pitch goes to Mays. He's going to be close to the first down. Moving up quickly was De La Pace, The Felici, we should say, who makes the stop. Young man out of Trenton. Close to the first down. The Fishers had to work pretty hard here on a measuring already here in the first half. Both teams have been close to that first down. Michigan unsuccessful in its first attempt in this uh, second half. So the measurement. Turner number 12 watching very closely the quarterback of Washington State. And the Cougars have it. So the first first down a rather second here for the Cougars in the second half and Turner now one for four in the passing department at the 49 yard line of Washington State the running backs LeBom number 21 and Reuben Bays number 36 and behind Turner that's Breland in motion, wide receiver. And going straight ahead, LeBom that time, gets across the 50-yard line, close to the Michigan 49. Got a couple of yards. Michigan reacted well that time to a play, and in the first half, Ray, uh, hurt them up the middle. Because you'll see the middle guard, Sinsich. He's getting double-teamed in there, but 
rolls off of it and just manages to stick his nose in there and, and, and create a problem. He didn't make the tackle. He probably won't get credit for it. But what he did is just clogged it up enough to allow the other guys to come in and make the hit. And his partner in the inside, Mallory, in there to make that stop with him. So the one-two combination paid off that time. Second and eight. Turner scrambling. Got the good speed. Trying to get outside and couldn't do it. Kevin Brooks trying to bottle him up, and John Lott came up quickly. But you can get an idea of the footwork of that young quarterback of Washington State. He's got tremendous quick feet. You know, they call it quick feet when you're a coach. The coaches at Michigan liken him to Cornelius Green of Ohio State. Not a great passer, but the things he can do in a scramble situation can really hurt you. And that is the thing they must watch from this young quarterback for Washington State. Third down and four for State. Brooks is out of there for Michigan. Dave Meredith checking in the defensive tackle. And again, a good rollout with a fake option that time, and Mallory making the stop, but it was Turner going for the first down. That is the true option, uh, Ray. Both backs are out there. You can see it coming down the line of scrimmage. That defensive end has to take two guys. He took the pitch back. Turner saw the opening inside and cut it back for the first down. You can notice number 36 that time was Mays acting as the trailer on the option play. Wing to the left this time for Washington State. And the wide receiver is a wing at that left side. However, they put Mays, the running back, in motion. Trying to go deep, couldn't find the man in there. And Rodney Lyles, the outside linebacker, applying the pressure that time. I think uh, Vince DeFelice also got in there. This is a real good job of coverage by the secondary because Turner fakes the short pass. Now he's going back and looking deep. Here comes DeFelice outside. That's Lyles, the outside end, Ray. That's right, Lyles. And there's DeFelice coming in late. And that is the real good coverage in the secondary because he had time to throw that ball and he allowed Michigan to get the defensive lineman off those blocks and onto the quarterback because of the coverage. Back at the 40-yard line of Michigan, it's second down to 14 for the Cougars. Again, they use Marshall as a wing on the left side. Lone running back is Mays. Might have been a broken play that time as Ricky Turner was out by his lonesome that side. Looks as if maybe he was looking for a running back and there was nobody over there. Somebody missed an assignment. Somebody went the wrong way because Turner looked around and nobody was there. Dede Moore, number 11, a wide receiver for Washington State checking in. You can see the option, and he looks back for the pitch back, and obviously the pitch back went the other way, and when Turner saw that, he said, I got to make anything I can out of this one, turned it up inside, and picked up three yards, which is not bad for a broken play. Oh, not at all. Third down conversions, over five for the Cougars. They got third and 11 here. Turner firing out, and he's a little bit low, and Jennifer John Marshall and Mallory of Michigan Applying the pressure to Marshall, but the throw was underthrown. Now, that's the difference between Rippon and Turner. Now, uh, Rippon's got that real strong arm. Uh, we saw him overthrow a couple of guys earlier. He'd have had that ball out there in time. Turner doesn't have the good arm, and he just threw it too low. I want to tell you, was that redundant? The throw was underthrown? <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Sorry, folks. Give us time. It's our first game, right? We got to get used to this, too. You know, was, uh, we didn't have any preseason training. Some people saying, Lane, you never had any training. <laughs> Fourth down and 11. I bet a guy this morning was talking about. <laughs> John Trott decides to punt it in a squib. Moving down to uh, Michigan territory, and it goes into the end zone. Well, they had an attempt, at least we thought an attempt for a field goal, and Trout aside, decided to try for the quick kick. A little scramble down there, and it'll be an automatic touchback. Michigan's ball at their own 20-yard line, a timeout now. Michigan leading 14-7. Well, we're very glad you could join us for our first telecast of the 1983 collegiate season. Michigan football coming your way. We'll look for you next Saturday night as the Michigan Wolverines will pay a visit to the Huskies at the University of Washington. First and 10 for the Wolverines. And coming across the 20-yard line and picking up just about three yards was Rodgers on that carry. Might have got close to four. Eric Williams, a defensive tackle making a stop on Rodgers. Rodgers now with 58 yards. 
Uh, the 14 carries that he's had. 8-19 to go in the third quarter. Michigan leading by a score of 14-7. They've gotten, uh, gotten a real good battle right now from Washington State. Second and seven. Hall on a swing pass coming out to Armstrong. Gets to around the 25-yard line. Strictly a one-on-one -on -one job. And couldn't elude the tackler on that side. You know, Ray, maybe in this third down situation, uh, Michigan's in a running situation, a third and five running pass. Probably still the loss. Take a look at the secondary because Michigan's wide out. Carter, uh, rather Carter, don't I wish, huh? <laughs> Vincent Bean, uh, Steve Johnson, and Giovanni Johnson really haven't seen much action today. We'll take a look and see what they're doing to it. Nickel defense employed now by Washington State. Five defensive backs in there. It's third and five. And Hall over the middle. Trying to go over the middle. And the Wolverines would like to have a penalty called on that one. As Rogers treated a little roughly over the middle that time on that pass. But it's incomplete. It'll be fourth down and five. But once again, the pass coming to a back out of the backfield. And Michigan's wideouts have yet to see the ball thrown their way at all yet today. Michigan, fourth down and five. This is Brackett. Not a bad average for opening day on the four that he's gotten away. At the 25-yard line, Michigan, all set to punt. That is Kendrick Taylor waiting for it around his 35-yard line. A short punt this time, just across the 50, and will be down at the midfield stripe across the field. So Bracken that time, not having too much luck. And Washington State will really start out in great field position. Before they do, let's pause for this message. Hot and muggy, the story for this first game at Michigan Stadium. Jim, I remember you telling me you played in a ball game against Navy and you lost how much weight? 26 pounds I lost in one afternoon. It's just, I soaked my uniform and two shirts. First and 10. La Palm on the carry. Cochran drives him out of bounds on the far side of the field. And La Palm picks up four yards on that carry to Michigan's 46-yard line. Good play by Tom Hassel out there on the corner. Or La Palm might have gotten more. Michigan with 10 first downs in this ball game, none of the second half. Washington State with four first downs, and they have picked up half of them here in the second half. 14-7, the Wolverines leading the Cougars of Washington State. It's second down and six for Washington State. Turner on the carry has the first down. The second time that we've seen that play as he had both backs on his side. Almost a misdirection on the option. Yeah, it is. What they do, Ray, is they reverse out, meaning both backs reverse out. Turner reverses and goes the other way. That holds the linebackers, gives the blockers a chance to cut them down. The linebackers were cut down because you see the guy in making the tackle was Tony Gant. Cochran is there. Hassel, the outside people in the defensive back. You don't like to see that if you're a defensive coach. First and 10, and right over the middle, the bomb gets close to the 30-yard line. And uh, say they get to the 30. With Bourne, the linebacker, Big Mike, making the hit. In the second half, Washington State running a lot more misdirection, right? They're doing some things inside, and they're trapping uh, the middle guard, Cinchich, and rolling him right out of there with a double team with the guard from the opposite side of the play. Usually that doesn't happen. LeBaum got through the hole there and has been picking up some decent yardage. He's got 15 yards on four carries, six on that last carry. Braylon in motion. And this time Mays going off guard and tackle straight ahead. will be close to the first down. Needed four yards on that carry for the first down. A line of scrimmage on the snap was at the 30-yard line, and Mallory of Michigan in there to make the initial hit. Got to be close. And we're going to get a timeout for a measurement. Game has turned around a little bit, Ray, in that it's just the opposite of what was happening in the first half, where Michigan dominated offensively, controlled the football, 
now Washington State's offense is really controlling the ball. Michigan has had two opportunities with the ball, football, and both times have been forced to punt. Uh, the Cougars have run 12 offensive plays. Uh, Michigan has run six. We've got 5.50 left in the third quarter. Things are turning around a little bit. As we talked about, this is going to be a very tight ball game. Ricky Turner has the first down. First and 10 at the Michigan 26-yard line. And movement on that right side on the long count by Turner. Turner trying, trying to say that that was encroachment by the Wolverines, but we'll wait and see what the officials say. That's against Washington State. penalty against the Cougars and Cougar coach Jim Walden is real unhappy about that call Mike Bourne is over there faking the blitz now you'll see the left tackle makes the move now Bourne is you know he he's got to anticipate the count but the offense has got to keep set until the snap of the ball if Bourne would have come across and made contact without the offense moving then the penalty would have been on Michigan. Well, we saw the story of the penalties, and that was young John Winslow, the right tackle moving there. First and 15 now for the Cougars on the option. Pitch out to LeBaum. Executed very well, but over there in a hurry to plug up everything was Tom Hassel taking out the blocker and making the stop. Well, Tom Hassel, that's the second time he's been out there all by himself. You'll see the pitch come. Now watch Hassel. He's being blocked. He just fights right through the block and forces the blocker into LeBaum and knocks him down. That's a great play by that outside linebacker, Tom Aston. Only four yards on the carry, so it goes second and 11 for the Cougars at Michigan's 27-yard line. Spread it out on the left side with the wide receivers, Taylor and Marshall. And plenty of time this time for Turner, and fires complete, but not enough for the first down. Hewlett coming up to make his first stop of the afternoon. Real good coverage by Michigan secondary because Turner had plenty of time to throw. He's looking out there and Hewlett right on him. Real good coverage. Makes a good stick. Stops him for a short game. Now they're forced into a third and long. And that was Marvin Adams, a freshman, that made that reception. Not on the two deeps as far as the lineup. So he got a little baptism that time. Third down and seven with a slot on the right side. They send Mays in motion to the left side. And the draw up the middle, straight up the middle by the quarterback, Ricky Turner. And again, close to a first down. But with that formation, Jim, sort of spreads out the defense of the Wolverine. It sure does. And when you've got a quarterback with the quickness of Ricky Turner, Again, similar to Steve Smith in the sense that he can come up with a big play. He can make things happen in a crowd. It's a straight quarterback draw, and he could get away. He got away from Sinsich right there and then dove over and make a couple extra yards after he gets hit. So in a sense, Ricky Turner is a key guy on those third down and intermediate situations because if you don't get him in the backfield and you let him out, then he can hurt you. We usually say uh, he's what? two plays off of that type of formation. The draw may be up the middle or a quick pass, right? Both quick passes are usually to the outside, too. In that situation, Michigan knew that. Their linebackers and their wideouts were coming up real tight playing those guys because game has turned around a little bit, Ray, and that it's just the opposite of what was happening in the first half where Michigan dominated offensively controlled the football. Now, Washington State's offense is really controlling the ball. Michigan has had two opportunities with the ball, football, and both times have been forced to punt. Uh, the Cougars have run 12 offensive plays. Uh, Michigan has run six. We've got 5.50 left in the third quarter. Things are turning around a little bit. As we talked about, this is going to be a very tight ball game. Ricky Turner has the first down, first and 10. After Michigan, 26-yard line. And movement on that right side on the long count by Turner. Turner trying to say that that was encroachment by the Wolverines, but we'll wait and see what the officials say. That's against 
Jets are against Washington State. Fifth penalty against the Cougars. And Cougar coach Jim Walden is real unhappy about that call. Mike Bourne is over there faking the blitz. Now you'll see the left tackle make the move. Now Bourne is, you know, he, he's got to anticipate the count, but the offense has got to keep set until the snap of the ball. If Bourne would have come across and made contact without the offense moving, then the penalty would have been on Michigan. Well, we saw the story of the penalties, and that was young John Winslow, the right tackle moving there. First and 15 now for the Cougars on the option. Pitch out to LeBaum. Executed very well, but over there in a hurry to plug up everything was Tom Hassel taking out the blocker and making the stop. Well, Tom Hassel, that's the second time he's been out there all by himself. You'll see the pitch come. Now watch Hassel. He's being blocked. He just fights right through the block and forces the blocker into LeBaum and knocks him down. That's a great play by that outside linebacker, Tom Hassel. Only four yards on the carry, so it goes second and 11 for the Cougars at Michigan's 27-yard line. Spread it out on the left side with the wide receivers, Taylor and Marshall. And plenty of time this time for Turner, and fires complete, but not enough for the first down. Hewlett coming up to make his first stop of the afternoon. Real good coverage by Michigan secondary, because Turner had plenty of time to throw. He's looking out there, and Hewlett right on him. Real good coverage, makes a good stick, stops him for a short game. Now they're forced into a third and long. And that was Marvin Adams, a freshman, that made that reception. Not on the two deeps as far as the lineup. So he got a little baptism that time. Third down and seven with a slot on the right side. They send Mays in motion to the left side. And the draw up the middle, straight up the middle by the quarterback, Ricky Turner. And again, close to a first down. Well, with that formation, Jim, sort of spreads out the defense of the Wolverine. It sure does. And when you've got a quarterback with the quickness of Ricky Turner, again, similar to Steve Smith, in the sense that he can come up with a big play. He can make things happen in a crowd. It's a straight quarterback draw, and he could get away. He got away from Sinsich right there, and then dove over and make a couple extra yards after he gets hit. So in a sense, Ricky Turner is a key guy on those third down and intermediate situations because if you don't get him in the backfield and you let him out, then he can hurt you. We usually say uh, two plays off of that type of formation. The draw maybe up the middle or a quick pass, right? Both quick passes are usually to the outside, too. In that situation, Michigan knew that. Their linebackers and their wideouts were coming up real tight playing those guys because they have done that in the past uh, in the first half thrown the quick pass out to the sideline, but it's not going to get you five yards. They only get you three. The call of Turner going down there in the quarterback draw was a good call because even if Turner doesn't get it or the play is not blocked well because of his ability as a runner, he can come up and make something out of nothing. That's why he's such a dangerous guy as a quarterback. Well, when we come back to play, it'll be fourth and one. And Washington State over seven on third down conversions. We'll see what they have in mind on the fourth down situation. Of course, Michigan opening up at home this afternoon here against Washington State the next two Saturdays on the road. Next week at Seattle against the University of Washington and then opening up the Big Ten campaign on the 24th against the Badgers up at Madison, Wisconsin. Meanwhile, on the other side of the ledger, Washington State after this game will take on Arizona. Then uh, it'll be the University of Las Vegas, Nevada. USC, UCLA, and Arizona State. That's a nice six weeks to spend. <laughs> Fourth and one. Turner trying to calm down the Michigan fans here. The Cougars made a first down. Mays and LeBaum, the running backs. Turner will try to do it himself and should be very close to having that first down at Michigan's 15-yard line. Cougars have it. They'll continue the drive. Good gamble for Washington State. You know, they're in a hostile stadium uh, in front of 104,000 people. Turner's a good runner. They've got a big offensive line. All they had to do was get an inch or two. And uh, when you're down that close in this kind of a game and they're looking at an upset, you almost got to go for the 
first down because your team's going to gain confidence every time. And they got it. Now they're a confident team. And Michigan's in trouble. Fifth first down for Washington State, the third of the second half. On the handoff, this time, LeBom heading between tackle and end, picks up a couple of yards to get inside the Michigan 15-yard line, close to the 13, might have come a couple of yards. Mike Mallory making the hit. And Michigan came with a blitz defensively. They ran both Mallory and Bourne through the gap, and uh, Washington State couldn't block it. And Mallory came through free and managed to get an arm on LeBom, and he went down. Good play for first down for the Wolverines on defense in a goal line situation. Give him three yards on the carry. Make it uh, second and seven at the Michigan 12. Garrett out of the lineup. Cooper back in at a defensive back for the Wolverines. Second and seven. This is Mays straight ahead, just inside the 10-yard line, to the nine-yard line of the Wolverines. So he collects three on that one. Born to get credit for the tackle. And if you've been following the Wolverines the last couple of seasons, you know that's the gentleman that's led in tackles in 1982 and back in 1981. So the pressure being applied to the Wolverine defense, third down and four at the Wolverine nine-yard line. La Bomb in motion. Mays a setback behind Turner. And the rush was on. Breaking in there was Hassel to make first contact on Ricky Turner. Thrown for a loss. Big play by Tom Hassel. He's made two or three this drive. He came on a blitz from the backside. Nobody was there to block him. He was on the weak side. They decided to go one-on-one -on -one man coverage on his side. Let Hassel go. He came barreling through there. Made a big play defensively for Michigan. Now it forces them into the field goal, so Michigan will retain the lead if they even make the field goal. John Trott will be the man to try for the field goal last week against Montana State. He was two for two, one for 31 yards, another one for 24. He'll try this one from 33 yards up. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So with one minute and 11 seconds to go in the third quarter, Michigan's lead is cut now to 14 to 10. It's got to be a confidence builder for Washington State, Ray, and the fact that the entire first half, they couldn't do anything offensively. They have stopped Michigan twice with three downs and a punt. They come back on offense, get a couple first downs, sustain a drive, use up most of the third quarter, and get on the board with a field goal, making it 14-10 with 111 left to play in the third quarter. Michigan now offensively has to come up with a big drive. They've got to start throwing the ball, I think, down the field a little bit, and maybe look to their wideouts, because all game long, David Hall has been going to his backs and tight ends out of the backfield. So it's going to be interesting to see what Bo Schembechler does offensively here with Washington State coming back. Washington State, 12 plays covering 50 yards and using five minutes and 59 seconds on the clock and settling for the field goal to stay in this ball game, 14 to 10. One minute, 11 seconds to go in the third quarter. And the Wolverines in this home opener have really got a battle on their hands against the Cougars of Washington State. Michigan in the third quarter up to this point has had only six plays from the line of scrimmage. Washington State 19. So the Cougars have really dominated play here in the third quarter. In the first half, Michigan's dominance in the offense was two to one in the number of plays run offensively. And here in the second half, it has turned around completely. Steve Johnson, number 24. Yolani Johnson, number 26, standing back to receive the kick as we saw the young man, John Trout, placing that ball down on the tee. We have not seen the runbacks today on the kickoffs. Both kickers doing a good job preventing runbacks. And it's been a story pretty well, except on one exception, for the punters today. And this one will sail right out of the stadium, or not quite out of the stadium, but off the playing surface into the first row. You know, one of the things uh, about college football, I think there are a lot of people would like to see, they'd like to see them move the kicks back to the 35, similar to what they do in professional football, because really, these kickers are getting so proficient, Ray, at putting the ball through the end zone, you're taking a really exciting play out of the game, because I know Anthony Carter, when he caught that ball on the one or two yard line and started heading back, had everybody on his feet. There are a lot of players in the country that are capable of doing that, but because these kickers are so good and they kick it out of the end zone all the time, we're missing that opportunity to see that big play. That's a good point, Jim. Rice is the fullback. 
And the running back for Michigan, or tailback, is Rick Rogers. As they come to the right side that time, Hall has done a good job at quarterback, but trying to get the Wolverines clicking here in the late stages of the third quarter. And that was the first option we've seen. David Hall came down the line of scrimmage and rode the ball into the fullback. We haven't seen the option from Michigan. David Hall is not the option quarterback. Steve Smith is yet. Bo elected to go on first and 10 there with the option play. Yeah, and he picked up four. Giovanni yeah, Johnson checking in. Steve Johnson checks out. And Johnson's put wide to the left side. Fake to Rogers. Hall will be smothered behind the line of scrimmage as the pressure comes in that time and Beasley, the outside linebacker, coming in to take care of David Hall. We've got the right side of the Michigan line, Stephon Humphreys, and they come with a, a linebacker from the outside. He gets outside the tackle because that was the split end side. There was nobody there to block him, and Hall just couldn't get the ball away early enough. Michigan may let the clock run out with only four seconds remaining here in the third quarter. And the third quarter is now history at this opener at Michigan Stadium. So with one quarter to go in this ball game, Michigan in a real battle against the Cougars of Washington State and leading by a score of 14 to 10. Spades on the strong side of their line, the left side, the left tackle and left guard. Mark Hammerstein in there at the left tackle. Jerry DiOrio in at left guard as we get all set for the start of this fourth quarter. And the Wolverines leading by a score of 14 to 10. Clay Miller, Ray, started the game as the offensive strong tackle, and Hammerstein's in there to replace him. Jerry DiOrio is one of those messenger guards. He and Humphreys and Belordis, although it's actually Belordis and DiOrio, will send the plays in from Shem Beckler. So uh, the real change in there is Hammerstein. Uh, I have been looking on the bench for Clay Miller and can't find him. He might have had an injury that we missed earlier. In that third quarter, Washington State with five first downs. Michigan with no first downs. 10-7 in that department, Michigan. Hall throwing behind his tight end, Nelson, that time. Had him in the clear. And a little bit behind on the throw. And boy, that really stretches open the tight end, the vulnerability to that defensive back. And that time, it was Joe Taylor, the strong safety, coming and covering on the pass. So it's fourth down and 12 for the Wolverines. Fourth quarter just underway. Bracken back in. It'll stand around his five-yard line. And Michigan, the last time in the three possessions they've had, it's been three plays and a punt. The same script. Actually, you know, Ray, I was just looking at the offensive line coming out again. They've got both Clay Miller and Hammerstein in there, and Doug James was out on that one. So maybe they're uh, alternating those tackles, too. Bracken had pressure that time. And waiting for it down there is Taylor. Kendrick Taylor gets outside and rambles to the 37-yard line. So before Washington State puts the ball in play, let's pause for this message. Washington State, first and 10 at their own 37-yard line. Ricky Turner stays in there at quarterback to start this fourth quarter for the Cougars. And that time, LaBaum carries for about four yards up to the 39-yard line. We'll make it a couple of yards. Excuse me. Al Citrus is doing a real good job inside. He almost single-handedly is stopping that dive and taking one of the options away as we take a look at an injured Wolverine, and that's Mike Mallory. Uh, I don't know. I didn't see what happened to him, but he was on the other side of the ball. He probably got involved with a guard and Maybe rang his bell a little bit. We'll take a look at the linebackers. Watch the left linebacker, number 42, Mike Mallory, sliding outside, gets into the play, and it appears as though he just got his bell rung because uh, he and the bomb hit helmet to helmet, Ray. Now uh, Kevin Brooks, while they work on Mallory, lipping off the field for Michigan. He's a tackle on the right side. This is Mallory. And trying to come off under his own steam, but having a little bit of help there. And you can't say enough about the fine work that the trainers of Michigan, of course, their head trainer, Russ Miller, has done over the years. You were looking that time at Rex Thompson assisting. Sort of the unsung heroes to keep these fellows in shape from week to week. 
second down and eight. La bomb in motion. And a quick throw out to him, complete, and a first down for Washington State. Wrapped up over there on the far side of the field by Crocklin and Boren. Once again, Washington State doing the little things that work offensively. They've got their motion man, LeBaum, out there, and it's a real quick, safe pass. But if you get a ball to the back, a back that can run well, like LeBaum, in the open field, he's going to pick up yardage. they got enough for a first down there. At the 47-yard line, the Cougars at their own 47. Michigan leads in the ball game, 14 to 10, with 14 minutes and five seconds to go in this ball game. And a bomb again, battling to get to the midfield stripe, hauled down by Tim Anderson, got just inside Michigan's territory. Tim Anderson in there to replace Mike Mallory and also replacing Kevin Brooks up front is Dave Meredith, right? So Michigan's got some new troops in there on defense at a linebacker spot and at the tackle spot. And Vince DePolice is over there on the right side. Hassel and Lyles are the linebackers, outside linebackers. Second down and six for the Cougars. Braylon in the slot on the right side. A receiver. Misdirection again. The option. And I think that time that Turner was a little bit slow trying to get rid of the ball. Didn't really make up his mind and he paid for it. Yeah, and I think if he'd have gotten rid of the ball, as you saw, he probably would have had a big gainer because he was out turning around that corner and he was tackled by the guy that would have had to also take the pitch man. And if he'd have pitched it out there, there was no way that Hassel out there would have been able to make the stop on the pitch pass. Turner has carried the ball 12 times and picked up 13 yards. Third down and three for Washington State. The ball at Michigan's 46-yard line. Taylor in motion and going straight ahead was Kerry Porter, the fullback. Now, Porter really disregarded as an average fullback in the Pac-10. Last week carried 12 times and picked up about 38 yards. So he's slightly better than a two-yard per carry average. So once again, Washington State going to that counteraction. Ricky Turner comes out, reverses out, gets those linebackers moving one way, and then hands a backhand off to the fullback. He gets enough yardage for the first down. That's the first time that the Cougars have been able to make the third down conversion. It's now first and 10 of Michigan's 41. Little slant coming inside with a running back to the Michigan 40. And again, Tim Anderson going to work down there and making the stop. That was Reuben May. Take a look at the Michigan linebackers. Mike Bourne, of course, leading tackler. You can see Bourne took that first step to the right. One of the reasons was because of the action in the backfield. That is that counteraction step that they're taking to take that linebacker just one step out of the way. Bourne reacted well to get back into it. Second and eight for Washington State. Mays now carry eight carries and 31 yards. Turner getting plenty of time, scampering, finds the man open, and he hits it for the first down. That might have been Jamie White that hauled it in. It was the tight end, Jamie White. Rich Hewlett is the safety back there. He fakes outside, and that keeps the safeties back. Now he throws it. Now Hewlett goes up behind, expecting the ball to be overthrown, and White goes up and makes the catch. You can see Hewlett right behind him jumping, but White made the real good catch up high. White with a second catch of the afternoon for a total of 39 yards. Now it's first and 10 Washington State at the Michigan 18-yard line. Mays goes in motion. And Turner wants to pass again. No, the draw up the middle. Gets away from a couple of would-be tacklers of Michigan and finally hauled down at the 10-yard line. Timing, the important thing that time, and it was Mike Mallory back in the lineup to make the stop. And also, Ricky Turner's ability to run and break tackles. Nobody's open. This is not a quarterback draw. He sees the opening. There he breaks one tackle. There's the second tackle he breaks. And finally, Mallory back in the game holds on. But that guy can make a lot of things happen down close. Now it's second and short. At the 11 yard line of Michigan, second down and three. Mays on the carry has the first down deep in the Michigan territory across the five yard line. So the Cougars of Washington State knocking on the door of the Wolverines. And it's all up front. This is just a huge hole in there. 
He breaks two tackles. That's not good tackling by Michigan. And then he gets into the secondary. They're picking off some big yardage inside the Michigan tackle. That was the strength. Sensich, Meredith, Brooks, DeFelice. Those guys got to tighten it up inside down here close. Mays and LeBon, the running backs for Washington State at the Michigan four-yard line, first and goal. Ricky Turner, the quarterback. And the handoff that time going to the fullback, Porter. Picks up maybe a yard, possibly two. The left side of the Michigan defense that time making a stop on Porter. Gain of two, it'll make it second down and goal at the two-yard line. And the toughest part for the Michigan defense here as they're on the goal line is the dive option. The guy that makes it the toughest on them is Turner because anytime he wants to pull that out, ball out of there and, and run himself, he's so slippery. He's the guy to watch. Mays and LaBomb, the running backs. And it's Mays on the carry. He goes through, slanting to the right side. Touchdown, Washington State. And the first time this afternoon, the Cougars have been in front in this ball game. Real good play call there. I think Michigan was looking at what I was looking at. Another option and let Turner take the ball out and go around in and try to dance in. What they did is ran that, what do you call it, a counter option situation with the inside handoff. And Michigan was full to the outside. The play hit back up over the middle. John Trout to try for his second extra point of the afternoon. And his kick is up, and his kick is good. And so all of a sudden, with 9.42 to go in this ball game, Michigan trailing 17 to 14. And there you saw the touchdown. You saw how Turner backed out, and it looked like they were going on that option. All of a sudden, he turned back, handed it to the running back. Washington State's got a lead by three. All the people who board play. It's the same drive by Washington State that time. 63 yards, 11 plays to take the lead. 17 to 14. John Trott all set to kick off. Giovanni Johnson and Steve Johnson. This is Steve Johnson about five yards back in his end zone. Go run it out. Got to the 15. Slowed down at the 15. And they were going to get a penalty. I guess Washington State might have been a face mask as Johnson brought it back close to the 20. I don't know if it was the actual face mask, but what he did is he got underneath the ear hole or something and then did pull around. And that is basically the same kind of thing. There's an unnecessary roughness kind of a penalty. You'll see Johnson takes the ball deep in the end zone, and there it is. He didn't actually get the face mask, but he just got enough of the helmet, and that's dangerous. And the referee threw the flag, and I think rightly so in that situation because the most important thing is you don't want to have injuries out there, and that's the kind of play can can create a head injury. Washington State picking up the sixth penalty for a total of 45 yards last week. Eight penalties and 65 yards against Montana State in their victory over Montana State. So University of Michigan putting the ball into play at its own 25-yard line. On the pitch this time to Roger. Gets a good block but trips over the foot of the defender out there of Washington State, Joe Taylor. The block had been applied by Taylor. Rogers trying to go inside and tipped over the foot. Pull back. Rice is out there, makes the block. Good one. Now he's got to cut it back inside, but you see Taylor did a good job rolling over the block, although I think the back should be able to get around that and cut up field to make the yardage because a guy that's down on the ground should not tackle a running back. Only one yard on that carry. All the pass. A little swing pass out to the right side. Completed. This is to Rogers. First down. A knock out of bounds. And he gets across the 35-yard line. That was a straight screen pass, Ray. Stephon Humphreys was out in front of Rick Rogers. You watch Stephon, 76. Let the guy go. Then heads out. He gets a key block. Kicking. The outside cornerback outside. Rogers makes a good cut down there. Also another good block thrown downfield. I think by the other guard, either Valordis or Diorio. I couldn't see the number. Tom Dixon got over there for another block. First, first down for Michigan in the second half. Eight minutes and 52 seconds to play in this ball game. The Wolverines are trailing 17 to 14. They've had a real battle from Washington State. Going straight ahead for about three yards was Rice on a carry to fullback. 
We've seen Michigan on first downs, right, go away from what they did early in the game. On first downs, they were throwing those quick passes to the tight end, trying to loosen Washington defense up. I think sometime during this second half, we've got to see Michigan go to their wideout. Vincent Bean, Steve Johnson, Giovanni Johnson. They haven't gone to him yet. Somewhere along the way, somebody's got to come open. Giovanni checks out of there. Steve Johnson comes in and goes wide to the left. Fence Bean wide to the right. That's Rice in motion. Rogers on the pitch to him. Cuts inside to the 40, 45. He may go all the way. Got one man to beat to the 30. Beats him to the 20. And is brought down inside the 10-yard line. Coming up from behind, Cedric Brown for the save. does a great job of running here. Almost broke it all the way as he could have gotten a block. The block on the corner by the fullback. Rogers makes a good cut inside. And then he gets another great block by Steve Johnson outside. He's able to cut back. Here's a great cut back here. Forcing a guy to miss. And if Vince Bean can just get over there and knock Cedric Taylor down, they got a touchdown. But Vince did a good job not throwing and avoiding the clip call. First and 10, just outside the 10-yard line. Rice carries inside the five. Got a couple of good blocks from that forward wall and drove to inside the Washington State five-yard line. I think somebody had a talk with the Michigan offense, right? Because they have come out here and just totally dominated, have controlled everything. There have been big holes to run through. The only play that didn't work really was Rogers when he tripped over uh, Taylor on that one, and there was a hole there if he would have kept his feet. Rogers has picked up a total of 111 yards in this ball game. Rice on his fourth carry there for a total of 16 yards. Second down and four for the Wolverines. They put Armstrong in motion. Carry this time. Carry Smith right back to the line of scrimmage. No go. And it was Milford Hodge, the nose guard, to greet him. In a situation like this in the first half in their first drive, Michigan went through that pass to the fullback. Now, you've got to know Washington State's going to be in a similar goal line defense against Michigan inside the five-yard line. We might be looking for that fullback to fake the block, maybe to this side of the field, and going in that flat. They'll use Armstrong as a wing back on the left side. Three running backs in there with Rice at fullback, Rogers the tailback. Armstrong in motion. Fake handoff. Hall carries. Touchdown, Michigan! And they do it with the option. Dave Hall came down the line of scrimmage. Washington State expecting Michigan to go inside or run that fullback with the fullback going in motion to the strength. Running the other way, Michigan comes back with the eye formation, running the option to the weak side. There was nobody over there to take it. All that time on the carry for the touchdown. Michigan goes back out in front with 6.10 to go, and leading now by a score of 20 to 17. Shortly in there, Michigan going seven, uh, 75 yards in seven plays, uh, taking only three minutes and 27, yeah, 27 seconds for that. Shopley now, the try for the extra point. Up and no good. Wide, no good. No flags on the field. So with 6-10 to go, Michigan leads 2017. The beauty of the play, the motion takes the formation and strength the other way. There's nobody outside to the short side of the field. David Hall goes in easily with the action play in Michigan, despite missing the extra point. And it's a big one. Still has the lead by three. Huge selections, unbeatable savings. By Michigan covering 75 yards and 52 of those by the run by Rick Rogers. Only to see the extra point missed. And Michigan now with 6-10 to go in the ball game, leading by three, 20 to 17 over Washington State. Mm -hmm. And that could turn out to be quite interesting. I tell you, for that one point, Ray, it, it, it worries everybody a lot because now Washington does not have to score a touchdown. They can tie this up with a field goal. Calvin taking the kickoff across the 20, breaks the tackle across the 25 to the 28-yard line of Washington State. So the young freshman has his longest game of the afternoon. And I'll tell you what else. 
puts a great deal of pressure on the Michigan defense now with that one point. Here's the kickoff return by the freshman Calvin. And again, not great tackling by Michigan. Nobody wraps him up here. Finally, they get about three guys over to knock him down. But defensively today, Michigan has not really tackled that well, especially here in the second half. Anderson making the stop on that kickoff return has checked out of the lineup. Mallory takes over that job at the inside linebacking post. Hand off to Mays, trying to get outside, can't do it. And what a job the linebacker Mallory did to plug up the hole, shove the intended blocker right back into the runner's face. I'll tell you what, Mike Mallory just made a great play. Watch 42, right side of your screen, comes up, he takes on a guard and stuffs the guard in the hole. Now he gets off the block and makes the tackle. That's a great linebacker play right there. That was the right guard for Washington State that he had, Mike Palumbo. Mays. Mike, Mike Colombo is going to see that in the films, and he isn't <laughs> going to like it, I'll tell you. Mays has carried 11 times, 36 yards. That's Mays in motion. Turner going back to pass. And going down the sideline. Juggling a complete Mays with a great reception. Had three chances and capitalized on the third one. Now let's check it. Was that Mays or not? It was a complete. Yes, it was. Yeah. He's the back in motion. He comes out, runs by Hassel. Now, they got his own, but he gets in the seam in front of Cochran, behind Hassel, and then, after juggling it twice, hitting his own man, the ball hits him in the shoulder pads, and he grabs on and holds on for the completion. Mays, a week ago against Montana State, had one reception, and that was for a touchdown covering 22 yards. Receivers flooded on the right side for Washington State. This is LeBaum on the carry, hot and heavy across the 45, down to the 42-yard line of Michigan. And getting up very slowly for the Wolverines is Meriden. He's up on his feet and coming off now. Nate Rogers checking in. Got a timeout with 4.50 to go. Let's pause for this message. Second and six for Washington State at the Michigan 43-yard line. Turner is hit on five passes out of nine attempts for 74 yards. He attempts to carry, does so. Gets to the 40-yard line, not enough for the first down. He's going to be about three yards shy, probably third and three, and they go back into the huddle. Good play on the right tackle by my, uh, Vince DeFelice. He beat a double team and came upfield and forced Turner to turn that back inside early, back into the linebackers pursuing. We gave you the stats on Turner in the air. He has carried 14 times for a total of 23 yards, except for a little time in the second quarter. He has been the quarterback for Washington State. Rippon was in there for a short time. Third and four for Washington State. And Turner fires it to Mays. Complete has the first down. Gets inside the Michigan 35-yard line. Mays looking like a pretty good runner there, but couldn't find daylight as the Michigan defense closed up in a hurry and leading the way was John Locke. And Turner has a lot of time to throw back here. He's getting a little pressure from Rodney Lyles. And he just checks off to a back. And, of course, Mays has been one of their best runners. He's a young guy comes over and gets enough yardage for the first down and really that's all they wanted because they're using the clock and they're getting close 342 left to play in the game Michigan up by only three speaking of Mays he's a sophomore out of North Battleford Saskatchewan first and ten for Washington State at the Michigan 33 yard line 329 to play Turner on the option he keeps it gets back inside breaks a tackle and slides down inside the Michigan 20 yard line and making a stop on him was Rich Hewitt. That play went because of an outstanding block by a wide receiver on Rodney Lyles. It was either Rodney Lyles or Vince DeFelice. I'm not sure which one. But uh, one of them is down on the field right now, injured a Michigan player. Ricky Turner is really dangerous in this situation. He gets out into the open field, and he is a tough guy to catch. I continue to work on the injured Michigan player back at the Wolverine 35 yard line. 323. They were very glad you could join us this afternoon for our initial 1983 opener. The Michigan Wolverines against Washington State Cougars. 
As you see up on his feet now is Rodney Lyles, and Jim, that's the man you were talking about that took the front of that block. Well, what happened was is that Lyles was on the end. The option came his way, and he started to run out to contain it. And all of a sudden, without seeing him, he ran into a great block from a wide out, and he was put right on his back. And as soon as that happened, Turner turned upfield, turned the corner, and was off to the races. And they have Washington State now inside the 20 of Michigan. So the call goes out to the Michigan defense once again to put on the brakes of the Express of Washington State at the 19-yard line of the Wolverines, first and 10. Three minutes and 12 seconds remaining. Michigan leading 20 to 17. Ricky Turner, the quarterback, and rolling out. Trying to find somebody in the opening. And couldn't do it. He had a man open, a running back, and it was Porter in the end zone. Didn't spot him. And loses a couple of yards. Goes back to the 21-yard line. Another look at it as he's looking into the end zone. Didn't spot the man. Uh, a straight rollout pass. That's the thing that, 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 you know, they give Turner the opportunity on the rollout. Michigan did a great job in making sure that there wasn't any spot for him to turn that back up inside. They kept him bottled up, strung it out, and then made the hit on him at the sideline. Scarcelli out of Warren, Michigan, getting a little baptism. Quick look and pass, and the intended receiver a little bit slow getting to where he was supposed to go, and Turner rushed by good thrust by the Michigan defense. They came with a blitz with Tom Hassel and Scarcelli, who made that great play a moment ago in knocking Turner down for a loss. Hassel is one of those typical Michigan linebackers. He's a little bit small to be playing the outside, but the story is about Hassel. If you put him into a room with 25 guys and tell him to fight, Hassel's the guy that comes out the door. <laughs> I mean, he is a tough little guy, and when he's coming on the blitz, he doesn't slow down, and that was a legal hit on Turner as soon as he delivered the ball. Hassel was there. You know, you bring up a very interesting point because I think if you talk to any coach and he'll say, hey, I'm looking for an enforcer. And it sounds like the way you're talking about young Mr. Hassel, that's exactly what he is. Yeah. The thing about Hassel that's interesting is you need you need good, nice guys to play, you know, okay? You've got to have good, quality kids. But you also need a guy that's got a little larceny in him, you know what I mean? <laughs> an athlete has got to have that competitive edge and some guys are, you know, on the edge on one side, the other guys are on the edge on the other side. Tom Hassel's the kind of guy that you like to have out there when you go to war. What you're saying is that sometimes he does not use a door handle. Is that no, right? He, he just after, he, the after he comes out the room with the 25 guys, he breaks down the door. Third down at 12 for Washington State. But the receiver's on the left side. The lone back is Mays in motion off to the left at the Michigan 21-yard line. And it was Rippin who checked into the lineup. He could not find the receiver, and it's incomplete. So they sent Mays out there on the left side around the 10-yard line, and Rippin missed him on the third down play. What they try to do is clear out the zone with the three wide receivers to one side. They actually flooded it with four receivers, the fourth being Mays. He goes in motion, turns upfield. Michigan had it covered pretty well, but Rippon was asked to come off the bench cold and throw that pass. That's a tough thing to do because it's a timing pattern. Well, John Trott is in there to attempt to tie up this ball game. Kicking from from about 37 yards out, and he misses! So Michigan's defense holds, and Trout is missing on the field goal, and Michigan continues to lead this ball game. 20 to 17. And Ray, you've got to give credit to a couple of people on that last stand. One of them, Jim Scarcelli, who came up with a big play to stop Ricky Turner on that rollout when they had first and 10 on the 19. The second guy, Hassel, because when Hassel came in there on that blitz and knocked Turner out, that put Rippin in the game in a third and long. They had to come with a cold quarterback. He overthrew him, forced him into the field goal position, and then they missed. It's making your own opportunities in a way, and Michigan did it defensively there. We got a quick note from our statistician, Jim Schneider, who says he will trade a missed point after for a field goal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll take that. I think Bull would too. 2.15 to go in the ballgame, Michigan at its own 20 yard line, first and 10, and straight ahead that time, the fullback carrying was Rice. And Rice does a good job picking up six, seven yards. And that was the play, Ray, where the tailback does not move. 
He just stands there in his position. When the ball is snapped, he just stands there all alone. Those linebackers are keying on him. They don't move. It gives the lineman a split second extra to get those blocks in the linebackers. That's why that tailback doesn't even move from his stand. Rice with 23 uh, yards on his carries this afternoon. And Michigan in that I formation, drawing the nose guard Milford Hodge, making a little contact. And so the whistle sounds, and Michigan gets a break here with the penalty going against Washington State, the seventh against the Cougars. And there's an instance where Michigan's offensive line stood still. Watch the movement. He'll make contact. But everybody on the Michigan line stood still, didn't move out of their stance. That's good concentration on the snap call. And it gives Michigan a first down without even snapping the football. At first down now, we'll set the ball at the 32-yard line of the Wolverines. One minute and 38 seconds to go in this ball game. And Michigan leading 20 to 17. They led at the half, 14 to 7. To Rogers. And Rogers gets to the 35-yard line. Stop applied by Beasley, the outside linebacker. And a timeout with 1.20 to go. Washington State calling that timeout. So Mr. Rogers has carried the ball 17 times this afternoon for 114 yards. 52 of those yards coming on one carry. And I think that was the biggest play of that whole drive, obviously, 52 yards. They went 75 in seven plays. But the thing I think most impressive about it was the fact that Washington State had just taken the lead. Michigan got the ball in their own 25. It wasn't going to be easy. They knew they had to go 75 yards. But somewhere inside, these kids, as they say in coaching parlance, sucked it up and got it done when they had to. I think while the coaches will be displeased somewhat with the kind of game this club has played today, they're going to be happy that they did come out when they had to, and they made the good plays. They dominated the line of scrimmage late in the game on a very hot afternoon and got in to win the game. Washington State with one timeout remaining. And Jim, I think on the other side of the ledger, the Pac-10 is going to hear from Washington State this year. I think the reason why is what Michigan was saying all week long. Washington State can play great defense. And if you've got a team that plays good, solid defense, and you catch a team that's not really ready to play, you can come up with an upset. And I think Washington State will surprise some people this year. Rice and Rogers, the running back for Michigan with 1.20 to go. And Rogers on the carry. Gets across the 35, gang tackling, shoves him back to his 34. But his momentum carries him close to the 38-yard line. 103 remaining. And Michigan clinging to a three-point lead. More importantly, trying to hang on to the football. And Washington not using their last time out here. I think they're waiting till fourth down or when they get the ball back. But they're going to run out of time. Michigan needing four yards for the first down. It's third and four. The time just ticking away, 39 seconds. Michigan taking plenty of time coming up to that line of scrimmage. And maybe too much time. Got that chalk off five yards, a delay of game against the Wolverines. And that stops the clock. But I think Bo would trade the 30 seconds he used on the clock right now for the five yards. Michigan's fifth penalty in the afternoon that marches the ball back to the 33-yard line. Michigan has all of its timeouts just in case. Washington State, one remaining, and 33 seconds remaining in the ball game. And an interesting ball game. Michigan dominated completely the first half, led, however, at halftime only 14 to 7. Washington State dominated in the third quarter. And Michigan came back, to, as Jim told you, to suck it up and go ahead in the fourth quarter. Two tight ends in there for Michigan on the short yardage. And not too much uh, time remaining. Boy, Rodgers on a carry again, going outside. The way they started this ball game was to the outside. And hopefully the way they want to finish this ball game to the outside. It also takes up a little more time on the clock. And they're going to measure here for this first down, Ray. And it's a very big measurement because if they get it, this game's over. 
And we talk about the double tight ends and short yardage situation. That time, Bo decided he wanted blocking up front with nine yards needed for the first down and very close to that first down. Well, the key, I think, with the double tight ends on that sweep situation is the biggest thing he wanted was to prevent Washington State from penetrating and causing some problems in the backfield when they got ready to pitch the ball. Very close, but it may be inches shy. That is. So Michigan forced to give up the ball and a punt situation with 25 seconds remaining. The clock is stopped. And Bracken comes into the ball game. The line of scrimmage, the 42 yard line of Michigan. Bracken back at his 27. Kendrick Taylor in the lone safety for Washington State. And Washington State has called for a timeout. That's their last timeout at the ball game. So Michigan will return to the bench, regroup, decide what they want to do as far as coverage on the punt. Meanwhile, Washington State will talk a little bit about how they want to set up on the punt return and what they'll do once they get that ball from the line of scrimmage. I don't know. You know, it's funny. There are a lot of things around through your mind right now at this point. Michigan, if they do kick the ball, and I think they will, you know, what uh, are telling their players right now, the last thing in the world we want is any penetration through the middle. He's telling Don Bracken to get the kickoff no matter what. He doesn't care how far it goes. He just wants to make sure that ball gets kicked on the other side of their 50. Because it'll only give them maybe uh, 18, 17 seconds or so to work with. And I don't think that's enough for them to come down and get in range for a field goal. But they have got to make sure that this doesn't get blocked. I doubt if they will try a fake and run up the middle because you know Washington State will be coming. Would you want Mr. Taylor to go out of bounds once he got up around his 25 if he could and get out in a hurry? Absolutely. Bracken with the punt. Good punt. Backs up Taylor inside his 15 yard line. And he calls for fair catch. The whistle sounds, stops the clock. And Washington State will start from the line of scrimmage right around their own 14 yard line. Big kick by Bracken and a real good job up front by Michigan because you knew Washington State was coming. So Michigan pinched down. They would not allow any penetration through the middle. Bracken hasn't had a punt block since he's been at Michigan. He's only a step and a half punter. And that right there was a real big key. Now Michigan will play way deep center field coverage and they cannot give up the big play because if they get inside the 40 yard line they know it's highly unlikely they may but they'll be throwing the bombs. They also got to watch out for the interference call. The Michigan secondary must. Slot on the left side, that's D.D. Moore in the slot, the wide receiver. Taylor is the other wide receiver on the left side. And firing over the middle, intended for late the tight end and incomplete as Ricky Turner was throwing. By the way, our thanks to Jim Snyder, our statistician this afternoon. Our spotter has been Fred Vosant. And helping out in the booth, Bob Stackpool for his coordination. Thank you very much. It's been fun. Michigan with 13 seconds remaining this ball game and leading by three. Mike Murray has been doing his job a little bit in the uh, warmth up here. This could be considered as quite a sauna bath. Trying to get outside. Moore does with eight seconds. Dede had an idea he wanted to go upfield a little bit more, but thought better of it. At this point, Washington State has got to throw the ball down the field. Rippon is in there, throws the quick look in, hoping to ke catch Michigan in a mistake and being able to split uh, the defense and get downfield some more. But Michigan is, has five or six defensive backs. Jeff Cohen is in there, Tony Gant, John Lott, Evan Cooper, Brad Cochran, uh, both uh, uh, three down linemen, two linebackers, all playing way back off the ball. It's just going to be tough, but Washington State's got to throw it down the field, and that's not going to do them any good. Rippon firing to Moore. And they couldn't stop the clock by getting out of bounds. Michigan has opened up the 1983 football season with a very tough battle against Washington State, 20 to 17, Jim. I think a lot tougher than a lot of people expected. Uh, the Michigan coaches all week long talked about the great defense Washington State had. I don't know how many people believe them, but it was clear today that the Cougars can play defense, and they all will be a factor in the in the Pac-10 conference. And Michigan escaped here with their lives. Final wrap-up in just a moment.
Yes, after the coaches take a look at the films, they might say, well, it wasn't pretty, but we won 20 to 17. That's right. Everybody down the line would have liked to have won this a little bigger. Unofficially, maybe we can look at a report card. The quarterbacking to David Hall. I think pretty good. Uh, I don't know why or what the game plan was. They didn't go to their wideouts at all today. Vincent Bean, Steve Jansen, Gilvani Jansen never saw the ball. I think they did, they did what they had to do to win, and I think that's what's going to come out of this game. How about the running of Rick Rogers? I think he was great. I think maybe he established himself as the number one guy. Kerry Smith did well, but I think Rogers, when he broke that big 52-yard run late in the fourth quarter, to really help that drive to put Michigan back on top might have solidified his position as the number one tailback. And what you saw of the offensive line, happy with it? I don't know. I'm not sure whether Michigan's offensive line blocked that poorly or answers on the Michigan replay show.